my whole life is yours. My whole heart is yours. My whole heart is yours. Lift your hands to Jesus. And so, Father, we give you glory. We thank you that you have brought us into a new day. Today is the 14th day of Abib. It is the day of the beginning of Passover in the Spirit. Therefore, we declare the Lord as we have dressed as royalty, the kings and priests that you have made us will be manifested. We will not miss out on divine verities and glories. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Are you here? Yeah. Uh, people are wearing hats. It's nice. What's that? What's that? Yeah. I nearly brought one before they say I'm using spirits to manifest. Yeah, sometimes you're a pastor, you can't overdress. Yeah, so that my fire any be. I'm back as a prophet of a baby. You know, but it's well, hallelujah. Uh, God bless everybody who obey the instruction. Yeah. I like your crown. It's very good. May the Lord manifest it in Jesus' name. Sometimes you people think this is just for fun. It's prophetic. If you didn't know it's prophetic. Ah, you're all looking beautiful. Praise the Lord. If I can't see beyond the light, it's very bright. But you're looking beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone said the seven spirits of God. This message will change your life forever. Uh, it's been taught a certain way, but it was designed by the Holy Spirit to change our lives forever. The seven spirits of God. And I pray that the Lord will grant us utterance at the same time to the Lord who open your mind and your spirit to assess truth, even from his word, in the name of Jesus. I have a memo from the Spirit for you. And I said this on my birthday, but I think quite a number of you didn't take it to heart. You didn't hold on to it. But I'm going to say something to you. I said, your miracle, your testimony, begins at the junction of what? Obedience. So wherever you obey, the spot, the action, the day, the item you obey opens up to you. Praise the Lord. If you read the Bible very well, Scripture said in Matthew chapter 7, go there for me. It said, there were two people who built a house, one on a sandy soil, one on a rock. Find a scripture from Matthew chapter 7. And the Bible said that um, these two individuals built their house. Can we read it? Let's go one to go. Mm -hmm. Do you have the passion or the passion or NLT. I want you to see something. All right. Everyone who hears what? My teaching and applies it is compared to who on the word? Next verse. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That means that any time you postpone the manifestation of the teaching you receive on Sunday, you have prepared yourself to be shaken in the day of storms. If you be a very true student to the things you hear every Sunday, you will notice that even in the preaching, the examples are things that are going to happen to you in the week. It's just that sometimes you are too busy to listen to other things. He said, anyone who hears these teachings, next verse 24, and that's what, and applies it to their lives. The Bible says something very scary in James 1.22. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving 
You see, for that is the essence of self-deception. That means hearing the word and doing nothing about it will set you to be deceived in the day you want to manifest it. How do you do something about what you heard? Jo James chapter 1, verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart. Sorry, not James 1. Um, Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and what? Not Sundays. Not when you feel like day and night that thou mightest observe to do. So when James says, you are deceived if you only hear without doing, he is telling us in Joshua that the way you do the word is by beginning to med meditate on it. If you don't meditate on the word, you are deceiving yourself to think you do it. You are deceiving yourself to think you do it. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I'm supposed to start something, but there was something that I, I quite didn't go into last week. Now, if you look at Acts chapter 6, the verse number 4, we're choosing the seven deacons. Out of the seven, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, there was only one gentleman in the list that was given a special description. Same was not given to the remaining six. Only one person, Stephen, a man full of faith, and full of the Holy Ghost. Not like the others. Why was Stephen different from the rest? Now, I'm going to share what I'm going to share with you in this perspective. Number one, he could not have been full of faith if he was not full of the word. You cannot be full of faith as a feeling. It is a product of the meditation on the word of God. In fact, the word full of faith is an overflow of faith. To be full of something means it's overflowing. We can see it reeking out of you. You, you reek the word of God. You lick the word of God. That's a person who is full of the word. Your jokes are word of God. Your, your sebi is word of God. Your for examples are word of God. That is a person full of the word. And if that person is full of the word, automatically he will be full of faith. He will be full of faith. And he said because he's also full of faith, he's also full of power. And why is he full of power? Verse 5, verse 5. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. So he was not just full of the word. He was not just full of faith. He was also full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you are not consistently listening, you are not going to be full of it. You, you have faith. Remember, I've taught you. But the faith is not pure. Your faith is quarter faith. Your faith is not capable to move mountains. It's faith, but it's not moving anything. But Stephen was full of it. He didn't move mountains. He moved the Lord. The Lord, the Lord does not stand, but because of Stephen, he stood. Do you understand? He went beyond moving mountains and moved the Lord. He moved heaven. If the Lord is standing, do you think an angel, angel was sitting? But there was a standing ovation in the entire of heaven because of his faith. Full of it. I'm going to say something to you. If you've ever listened to any of my teachings in the past two years, 2022, 2023, especially 2022, I did revival meetings and I taught on a certain gentleman called Antipas. We are entering the days of Antipas. You better get ready. Two days ago, one of my sons sent me a clip. He said, Daddy, the thing you said is coming to pass. I said, What did I say? He took me to a message I preach. I told you some things beginning of the year in preaching. Number one, the West will betray Israel. Number two, I told you that the Arab nations will come against Israel. Iran has started bombing Israel. So aside Hamas, Palestine, Iran has joined. And Iran has nuclear weapons. That means if Iran has moved, that means there's a strong caliphate of the Islamic world that is coming to descend on Israel. Number three, the reason for the dissensions that is being generated by Israel's foreign policies and actions is a product of an act of God allowing the time to be hastened. Now hear this. What that means is that 
Naturally, people are confused about the Israeli-Palestinian war. Because some people were bombed on 7th October. Make can you be quite confused. What happened 7th October? <laughs> you see, that's how you'll be there. You see that they'll start bringing laws and certain gases will enter our atmosphere. You're like, hey, what's happening? When? When? <laughs> hey, hey, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please stop wasting your time on useless TikTok. When I say useless TikTok, I'm not saying TikTok is useless. Useless TikTok videos. When you go online, let the things inform you and instruct you. Don't waste it. Do you know when it doesn't instruct or inform you? You've lost brain power. Do you know that? Yes. When you don't exercise your brain to inspire you to think stronger, you are losing brain power. You are becoming less intelligent. Isn't Instagram? The boring that is happening is that your brain is being spent on things that are trivial. Snatching waste is not all it is. It is not about life. <laughs> Today, that's my title. Eh? <laughs> Are you understanding? Are you hearing? So, when he sent me that thing, I saw it and I said, my God. So, he said, he said, what do we pray? I said, listen. First of all, we must pray to know the assignment of God in these days. Because if you think, it's one thing for Russia to be fighting Ukraine, but it's another thing for Israel to be under warfare for more than six months. You don't know what is generating in the atmosphere. You know, it's one thing the Palestine. Listen, if there's any fight between Gaza and Israel, it's they've been fighting since. But sometimes it cools off. Everybody minds their beer. But this one is continuous fighting. And another country has entered because apparently they went to bomb an Iranian something, something. Some are more right now. You can't even trust the news because they, they, they explain it to create emotions so that we, without the Holy Ghost, we are supporting anything. We are not being discerning enough. But what that does, does that mean? I told you that 2025, something significant to happen on earth. This is not the time to be falling. No, no. If listen, listen, listen no, you want to see what I'm saying. If there was any time you can backslide, you know there's way you can backslide, you front slide, backslide, like a small, small, you are coming back, you go back small. No. That means that the engineering of backsliding is such that not everybody is able to recover immediately. That means that some of you, if you don't take it, that your front slide, backslide continuum you are play, playing with, you might be close to rapture and you are now trying to catch yourself back. You might miss something that will cost you for eternity. No, 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 no. This is not the time to play games. If you have feelings, catch it and put it in a locker and burn it. Say, I'm, I'm, me and you, we are done. The bomb is coming. <laughs> There's a bomb in the atmosphere. You are thinking of feelings. <laughs> so as I was praying, the Lord told me, he says, that, you see, that is why the, the faith you have is important. That means that if anybody has trained themselves with the word of God, Psalm 119, go there. Let me show you something. I needed to continue this part of the message. Psalm 119, the verse number 11. He says, thy word have I what? Hid in my heart, not in my head. He didn't say, thy word have I kept in my head. Passion translation. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I consider your prophecies to be my greatest treasure. I memorize them. Of course, he was concerned in speaking about word prophecies in regards to the scripture. He says, I memorize them and I write them on my heart to keep me from committing sins treason against you. That means that every sin we commit is treason against the purpose of God in our life. Today I will show you why. Bandelo, Faretes, and it us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So, what is coming will reveal what we have hidden in our heart. That means in that day, anyone that is full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, will not have a problem with stoning. Kedandoromos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, chances are also that it's because of what Stephen was full of. That's why he got the type of death he got. Hallelujah. 
When we enter heaven, you will know that not everybody is qualified to suffer for God. This is your thing you are calling suffering. It's disobedience. You were just disobedient. You're a stubborn person. Forget that. It's not suffer. You caused it. Yeah. Someone who goes to play ball and twists his leg. Is that suffering? There was a choice to play the ball, not to play the ball. And when the ball was being played, you heard the guy shout, if you miss the ball, don't miss the man. You see, the one when we were young, we were playing ball. You see, there's some guys, they don't know the ball. They know the leg. So you, you'll be hearing them shout from the back. As you are going, you are going to score the goal. You hear somebody shout at the back. You heard that and you say, when you hear something, the guy is coming. You can see he's not interested in the ball. Those days, I remember as a child, when the guy is running like that, you just kick the ball away. You say he forgets the ball, he's coming towards you. It's you he's looking for, not the ball. <laughs> Who has ever, the boys, do you remember? Before we even started the match, you see the guy's face did not look that he's interested in the ball. It is a fight he wants to end on the pitch. He didn't come to f- play ball, he came to hurt somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, what is coming? There's a trial of faith coming to the world. Those who have the word of the Lord hid in their heart will thrive in that day. They will pray and faith will be intact. They will not be motioned by fear. But a lot of us also who have decided to be commercial Christians. You know, you find people go like, I'm tired of church. Hey, what is coming? Even unbelievers will ask for church. Yeah, you're going to read the Bible. You understand? The Bible said they'll be looking for somebody who knows the Lord to show them God. Because of what is coming, everybody will know only God is the Savior. Oh, yes. And you are here. You have the privilege, but you are taking it for granted. You think it's a joke? It's not a joke. Africa has that tendency. When COVID started in China, we're like, oh, it's far. It's one of those chicken, chicken best sass or chicken flu to pass. So, it says for monkeys, eh? they eat monkeys and all kind of animals. So it's unto them. By the time we realized, all of us were in lockdown. That means that very soon, even Ukraine war affected tomatoes in Accra. Yeah. They are buying tomatoes in Mokola. This woman does not even want CNN. He said, ah, we see a or Russia, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Prices are caught up. Hey! This woman does not know Russia Ukraine war. She doesn't know the dynamics, yet she can quote it as reference to inflation. How much more Iran? And do you know the shocking thing? I saw some people online saying boycott Israeli products. I laughed. Nestle, Colgate, Coke, all of that is Israel. So if you say you are boycott, then you will not eat. <laughs> yeah, you will go nowhere. Because most of the joints are Israeli owned. Why are you going? That means that, listen, then, if they're under threat, it will create a global crisis. This is the reason why Antichrist is not coming for Africa. He is coming for Israel. But all of us will be caught up in the fight. And this is the part. Where do you stand? All your life, you have, I, some of you, let me tell you something. You don't have a problem. You have idolized a boy. A boy is your agenda in life. Marriage is, you, and some of you, can I even shock you? Some of you have idolized your feelings. Your feelings are stronger than what God is saying. I don't feel like praying. And God is lying. Your, hey! You've made an idol of your feelings. Come on now, come on. I will never address any social media argument between men of God or whatever it is. But I will always address an event that is propelling us to the coming of the Lord. Those are the things I talk about. Because it's not for fun. I don't know if you know Hamas. Then, sir, I began to enter this matter. And I was investigating. And the Lord opened my eyes. And there is a guy called Musab Hassan Yusuf who is actually the son of the co-founder of Hamas. Now, this man left, defected from Hamas, late 1990s, early 2000s. Wrote certain books, nobody was listening to him. When Israel was being bombed recently, he came out to speak. He said he was there when Hamas started in the late 70s or so. And when he started, he knows what Hamas is all about. 
Do you know this man was now invited to the UN mission to Israel to speak? He is not Jewish. He's Palestinian Hamas. Yet, Israel was comfortable to listen to them, to him, speak on their behalf. As I was watching, the Lord said, the emotions for receiving Antichrist. Because if somebody will speak for them, they don't care if he's Buddhist. If you don't get what I'm saying. Because they will not allow a Palestinian into Israel mission to speak to Jews. But because he's speaking for them and seems to have knowledge about the institution fighting them, they are willing to accept him to speak. This is why the Antichrist would deceive even the Jews. Because they will seem to be looking for somebody who will redeem and help them and speak for them. Feelings, so feeling. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like going to church. I, I don't, I'm tired with this church thing. Then you have the others who also text me as prophet that, that they am tired. If, if I list the things and the reasons why I can quit God, you, you open your mouth and say, I don't have a point. But I have seen the end of time. I have seen eternity. There are some things when you see eh, no struggle on earth is comparable. No wonder when Paul saw the eternal, was caught up into the third heavens, leaving his prison, beating him till he walked like a hunchback, distorting his walking form, beating him and scourging under his feet so that he couldn't walk straight in any ways after that scourge under his feet. All the things Paul went through, being stoned and rising up to the same city that stoned him and said, once upon a time, I'm back. Terminator, I'm back. But they beat him. But I said they stoned him and left him for dead. The disciples came, yet he came back to the same town again. And they said, this guy doesn't hear a word. There was something Paul saw. And Paul said, my light affliction, which is but for a moment, because I've seen the eternal suffering. Nothing on earth. It's not a breakup. It's not an absence of marriage. It's not an absence of child. It's not a difficult marriage that is capable to be compared. You've not seen it. If you see it, you understand why some people, you can cut their hand with a knife. They will lose a limb, but they'll hold their mic the next day and say, I'm still preaching. And you're asking, what is wrong with you? You suffered nothing, yet you've worshipped your feelings into magnifying something that is not even qualified to be called light affliction. It's not even qualified to be an affliction, let alone receive the adjective light. What are you going through that if you are an unbeliever is not going through? And they are even more comported. Can I do a prophetic work like that? It's a prophetic pineapple. Collect it. Begin to, begin to refocus your life. It's good to work. In all labor there is profit. But your life is not determined by your work. It's good to marry. Yet your idol is not your husband. Your baby is not your choice. Today, you see, people have idolat they've idolatized marriage and baby. Do you, do you, when they started taking pictures of stomach being pregnant, that was the beginning of the idolatry of pregnancy. If you didn't, I'm telling you today. Because to what end will you show your stomach half naked? You can be a pastor's wife, yet you are in a nightgown, and everybody can see, uh, excuse me, to see a little bit of your breast, a little bit of your panty, and you have shown your stomach. Since when will this picture pass in heaven? You are a child of God. He say, as for me, when I marry, I'll do this kind of prophecy. Does he understand? Eh? I don't know life. The day affliction finds you, you understand. <laughs> now you understand that this kind of we, I preach Antipas on a purpose. I said, you have, he said about Antipas, ah, you have followed my servant. That means that God gives you a pastor for you to methodize your life. I've not said don't chill, but I've, 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 I've shown you by my life that in fact, even meeting great men, I don't put it online. If I tell the people I've met, some of you can't that and say, Prophet, lay hands on my head. I told one of my, I told my leaders in last year, I met one powerful general in Nigeria. And when I was there, everybody was new that day. Touch my head, touch my head. I'll never show you the pictures of the men of God I've met. Or the people we sit by. Because that is not, have, do you know them people who put pictures up yeah. of ben -Hin, they've met ben -Hin, they've met Katrin Kuma, they've met this, and they became nothing. They became nothing. They became nothing. Because the whole point was, I have to show that I know somebody. Even the energy is the reason why you never became something. But if you have the right energy, sir, 
as long as them, they touch my head, in my heart, until anybody gives an example, the prophet is carrying the mantle of this man, before I ever say, he ever touched my head. You will not hear that story until I feel and I see, and people can testify. Also, you are walking in the realm of this man. Then I'll say, oh, I once stepped in his house. He once touched my head. He said, you are following my faithful servant, Antipas. Don't you think we all have feelings? You think if I don't lose my guard down, a lot of girls worry me in this life. But you have feelings more than us. Fantiful can say be say say be a be a bit the best nature. One shawa, one kade mo ayazi. Do you understand what I just said? What it means is that if you will be a womanizer, let us see your appearance and clap for you and say it's not your fault. <laughs> Have you seen the proverb I've given you? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, my elders, my elders are here. These are my elders. <laughs> Are you understanding? Sometimes when you see people want to be bad and follow Satan, you look at them and say, you are not qualified. <laughs> Nothing about you qualifies you to be a vagabond or a rascal. You don't look like... The way you look, you better serve God and let God have mercy on you. It's your height and body you are using to misbehave. It doesn't match. <laughs> you know that type of people... If Satan is done with them, there's no hope for them. There are some people, at least if Satan is done with them, humanity can have mercy on them. Because they look nice, they look okay. Yeah, we can consider. <laughs> can I preach today? So when you go home today, go and tell God, kneel down. Let my focus be you. Let my gaze be you. Because the palace is nothing to Daniel. Daniel says, they that know their God, they will not be corrupted by these things. They will be strong and do exploits. Recently, I think there's a rapper in America who's under investigation. And if you listen to the stories that is coming out of this man, sir, some of the people we used to listen to as rappers, it's a disgrace. When I even think about, ah, ah, I feel like vomiting. Then the Lord said to me, said, do you remember, remember I told you some time ago that a girl wears skimpy dress, show her ties, and you'll be coveting and lasting after her, only for me to show you in the spirit when you have grown that that was a dragon with a snail's tail and two eyes and four noses of a fox. You will see this is a hideous creature, but my natural eyes was attracted to. May the Lord open every man's eye here so that your life will be delivered from last. If the Lord shows you the girl you are lasting after, you will start vomiting. Say, God, is this what I like? What is that? Thy word have I hid in my heart. My elders. All right. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Thy word have I hidden in my heart. How do I hide the word in my heart? Meditation. As I wake up in the morning, it's in my heart. Look, we preach three hours every Sunday. If you even listen to it 30 minutes, it will not be enough. But before Sunday to reach the end. And that three hours means that no matter how you were blessed, excited, something happened to your spirit, but you can't retain everything or even explain it from your mind. And chances are that be true with yourself. You don't have enough time to listen straight three hours on Monday. By the time you are doing... Three hours, one hour, 20 minutes we slept. So by the time you realize, the message has come back to back. You have over 12 to 15 hours a month of heavy duty information. And yet you've decided to room other things. During the painful part, you only circumvent and come back. And come and realize that that thing I felt two weeks ago, if I had listened to this message three weeks ago, I wouldn't be tempted. It's true, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's true. So Satan has a way of tricking you, make you feel tired. Because he knows if you break the barrier into the information, that will change you. You, 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 you. No, no, let him be tired at 45. Because the answer is in one hour. So by 45, you are feeling like, let me change and watch something. Or you know the shocking part? He makes you skip. And the skipping part there, you, which Holy Ghost will make you skip his word? So whoever is making you skip, you should ask, what is making me skip? The one making you skip will make you skip what will deliver you from his influence. 
So you get to 45, say, go to two hours. But two hours, go to two hours, 30 minutes. Oh, I finished the message. <laughs> Who are you deceiving? <laughs> the day adversity shows up. Listen, we're in a meeting yesterday, and the lady shared a testimony that she was delivered from cancer. And she had been preaching, she had been displaying miracle, whatever, preaching, leading press and all that. But the day they diagnosed her with the thing, she had no time to apply faith. He said that's why she realized that she was doing God's work, but she didn't have the word in her heart. A lot of you are always, look, when you, you break your heart, you are confused. They give you a medical report, you are lost. It tells that the thing we are teaching, you are not listening. You are not listening. Two days ago, God told me, says, now anybody who come to your office in Ephesus, they will have to enter your office with a growth plan. What that means is that you have to tell me what you are reading, what you have been listening to before you enter my office. Because some of the things when you come and talk to me, I go like, it's in the message. But you, are come, you just want to complain. What's in the mini abrepa? A king service. Because the shocking thing is that, sir, you recommend the message to your friend and they get changes and you are still sitting there. Yeah. How come? The same message that changed somebody by your side, you, you are still at the same spot. Why? So if you want to visit prophet and you are in Ephesus, you will come with a growth plan. You must show me the book you are reading. If it is the book you've recommended in the month, hallelujah. Number two, you must show me the exercise. What is lacking in your life? That you must deal with. Some of you have anger problem. Some of you have lust problem. Some of you have lack of self-control problem. You have to show me the things you are doing. What are you studying? What have you discovered in that journey? Because if you don't take it, you will hear this word for 20 years and you will still be the same. It's the word in your heart that does the change, not the word in your head. Some of you know how to recite everything with precision, but your heart and your life is over the bar. Do you know over the bar? Yeah, it's over the bar. You must be the thing. You must be the thing. If we were all what we study, won't the world be a wonderful place? Yeah. Ah, this world would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> One prophet told me <laughs> at the meeting yesterday, he said, Oh, prophet, why you Jose? Was speaking in trees, eh? you've done yourself like you don't know how to profess. Eh? Every day when they give you a mic, take it, take it, take it, take it, then you are done. <laughs> Say you are, you are hiding that you can profess. Eh? But when he was done, I was speaking somewhere, I said, Sir, I don't know how to take the glory from a message. Yeah. Because this generation, you like show than the word. And sometimes you think we are more powerful, especially on this side of the town, when we touch you than when we release. I've gone to places I said, take it, and they were watching you. Because the Holy Ghost told me that they are waiting for you to come and touch them. Because when I've gone to three churches before, and the three church you have to touch. Then the person will So if they don't if they don't do peer, then you lift your mic and say, The Lord is here. It's about to touch four people. The, the wind will blow, but you say everybody's like, <laughs> enjoyable wind. <laughs> what a wind. Yeah, nobody's falling down. Yeah. The same thing if you do in America. There are seven people here. The hand of the Lord is touching you. You will see a whirlwind in the service. Because they have a problem with touching. Yeah. Because they believe that if the wind touches me, then it means it was really God. But in Africa, you want to be touched. Are you here? Yes. The Lord is coming. Don't live for men. Live for the Lord. Your, lo li your loyalty should not be men. To be men. It's supposed to be to the Lord. Because when the owner shows up, eh, he realizes a lot of things you have made a big deal. It's not important to him. It's, what are you making this thing about? <laughs> Hallelujah. Wave your hands to Jesus. <laughs> Say, I'm the king's kid. I'm the king's kid. Say, I'm the king's kid. I'm the king's kid. Amen. 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 God bless everybody who has been sending us their testimonies. Remember, Abba is still sorting us out. Yeah. <laughs>
Number two memo I wanted to show you. Zechariah 10 verse 10. This is what we do. I, I feel like these are emphasis teachings. Zechariah 10 verse 10. 10 verse 1, sorry, not 10, 10. Zechariah 10, 1. Ask see the Lord reign in the what? Oh, no, please read with me well. Let's read together. I want to go. To everyone, grass. Now, this scripture is very defining in the sense that it seems to tell us something very interesting. Now, chapter 9, go to chapter 9, the verse number 7. In fact, go to verse 12. Chapter 9, verse 12. Uh -huh. Go back to um, 7. Verse 8. It's something very prophetic is going on here. Verse 9. And he said, Rejoice. Uh huh. Thy king. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Verse 10. No, don't, don't, don't read to the end. Just go to 11. I want to just show you some things. I want. Uh -huh. And what? Okay, next verse. Verse 13. Next verse. Okay. All right. Now you read in context what he was talking about, verse 9 is talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10 is speaking about the work he has done by reason of the finished work on the cross of Calvary. Now, when you read it downwards, you see what the Lord will do for them, the Lord will do for them, the Lord will do for them. But chapter 10 says, it is the season of their deliverance. It's the season the prisoners of hope must come out of the mad pits. It's the season where these things have all been turned around. The, the Lord who is king is riding on the ass coat has come to his people. But if they don't ask in the time of latter rain, they will not get the rain. That means that after chapter 9 is speaking of the work of God on the cross. Chapter 10 is telling us the administration of the work on the cross. It is by action. If you don't ask, even though he has died for you, even though it is a, and I'm saying it in reference to this month of April, which is actually the month of supernatural manifestation. If you are silent, nothing will manifest. So if you don't take care, you are missing out month after month of blessings in regards to what God has released, but you are silent. You are saying nothing. Supernatural manifestation will not happen because you are quiet or you want it to happen. It is the time of latter rain, but the administration of that time is to speak acts. What will hurt you if you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this month of supernatural manifestation, I claim hundredfold my salary. That's it. If you don't talk, it will not happen by mistake. So the Lord told me I should tell you, it's the amount of supernatural manifestation. 14 days is already gone. You are left to 17. Listen, every morning, speak, oh, speak. Don't be silent. Somebody gave a testimony of how uh, I declared something, some 50 blessings of Abba. And they said, because of what was declared, they also said, then Lord, me too, I deserve the... Somebody was there saying, Amen. And went home and thought the 50 blessings of Abba will happen. Have, no, take your time, okay? Get to our channel. Read all the testimonies. You will see one emphatic ingredient. When prophet declared, and I heard it, I was going through my day, and I said also, if Abba is taking care of everything, then Abba, take care of this too. And by evening, I got my testimony. If you like, be silent. 
no matter what is declared, you will never see it in your life. So supernatural events are because it's about, it will happen by, by itself. It's a lie. It will happen. Do you not read what he said? When I was quoting from another translation about the prophecies, he said, The prophecies, Psalm 119, verse 11. He said, Thy prophecies and thy words, I have memorized them and I keep speaking it to myself so that I don't commit sin's treason against you. So it's, your, it's a matter of supernatural. What are you looking for? A young lady brought her sister, one, one of the honors was her 14, I think Abba and Firstborn. They brought, they, 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 when the girl went to first year, something happened to her, she lost her mind, all that. So they brought her after service to the mom, I prayed for them. And I saw her yesterday, so prophet, since the day you prayed for my sister, she has started behaving normal. She started behaving well. I said, then the Lord's work is working. Do you understand? Somebody to be quiet in their corner. Feeling that, oh, once it's God has declared it, I'm waiting to see. <laughs> it was not the operation of the new covenant. In the time of latter rain, you ask. And if you transliterate ask, you demand by right. It's my portion. It's my portion. I'm speaking to those online because the Lord showed me something. Some of you, God has to resend you to Ghana. Because, yes. It's, and no. You see, look, hey, hey. I told you many times. Sentiments is the being of fulfilling the will of God. A lot of you are too sentimental about what people will think. So you are afraid to do the will of God. Yes, if your time in America is up, your time in London is up, your time in um, um, Italy is up, your, wherever you are, your time is up and God says, come back. Why are you feeling like you are failed? No, do you understand? Why? Can't you go back? However, if you also feel that this is not what God gave me in prophecy, then you better make demands by the Holy Ghost and say, this is not what God said. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, A, B, C, D, in 24 hours, I activate the clause of the prophetic word that will bring me here. That's it. That's it. And that's the end. We are back. Oh. Listen to me. What is coming? Hey, what is coming? Men of faith will have to rise. What is coming? People who know their God and will not consider suffering, death, disease to be God denying them must rise. Those who have known me for a long time, 15 years ago I kept telling them, I said, as we get closer to the end, it will look as if God is not answering our prayer. Because the problem is that men will become lovers of pleasure, not process. So because we like process more than pleasure, we like pre pleasure more than process, we want God to do it even if we are wrong. Even if it's not God's will, we want God to do it. So if God is also saying, I don't work like that, we will start getting disappointed that, ah, you know, God is not my, hey, hey, hey. You can't be complete. You won't catch me once. In any circumstance, Making a negative statement about God. It will happen. In Bano, it will happen. Will it? Eh? You agree to me? <laughs> it will happen. Because I've sentenced by all means. God is always right. If I'm fasting and it's not shifting, that means there's a will I'm injecting into a plan. I must come back and say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Why can't we be like Jesus Christ? Jesus is, Jesus is also praying the prayer he pray that God should stop him from dying. But he realized that the thing I'm praying, it won't be answered. So he rather shift his prayer. Your will and not mine. Then God sends him. That means that any time you pray his will and not yours, if it's difficult, he will send you angels to be strengthened. To go through uncomfortable situations because you have to, you need it. But therefore, Christians, some diagram. I told you what is coming is worse than lockdown. It's worse than lockdown. One very and powerful man of God said something, and I, I said it to you some time ago when I said, Mr. Gates has started buying lands, and okay, the world is entering to seed. 
I saw something recently and I wanted to even talk to you about it, the seat thing. They are going to send us seats. You see this GMO agenda? The way they are going to do it is such that our plans cannot replicate itself because they don't have seats. And the creation said every tree bearing fruit with its seed in it. So when there is no seed, it means then how do you plant again? You have to buy a seed again. You can't collect it from what you planted. You have to go and buy. That means when you are now dependent on a shop to give you seed, they can put anything in the seed and you don't even know. <laughs> I said it here. I spoke about the vaccinations and all those things. And I said, you see, it was like a Russian roulette. So they do probability. Out of 10 people, two people should suffer this so that it's not obvious. Eight to be fine, but two will go to something. So every 10 portions, two will be off. Two will be off. American CDC has a report on what they call vaccine injuries. That has not come out. Someone say, Prophet, please, don't, don't teach like that. I took it. May the communion wash it out of your system. We all have to use communion to wash things out of us. Use communion to cleanse your system. What am I trying to say? Where the world is getting to? You've not seen wickedness. I told you when I thought about um, last year, mystery of iniquity. You will see wickedness in desperation. That's where you see a person who is desperately wicked. Not the hato, the man. <laughs> it has left by mistake. It is now, I, I, I love to be wicked. I love it. That's why I mentioned to you Hitler. I mentioned to you Idi Amin. I mentioned to you Lamech. Lamech killed somebody for pleasure. He said, I've killed the man to my head. The English looks like, but if you look at this, he killed him for no reason. He didn't need to kill him. But he said, I've, I've, I've killed him. And if they this, then they have to avenge me also. You are going to enter a realm like that. Let him that has an ear hear what the word of the Lord is saying. I don't like giving prophecies without scriptural backing. That's why I've explained everything that's happening in the world right now. Your posture, your posture in it. This is the time to kneel down before God and ask God, do I have to go to America? Because chances are that if you are traveling and a missile meets you, <laughs> you know that thing, like you are now asking God, Lord, was it your will at this time? <laughs> yeah, thirdly, the Lord told me to do something also. And of course, you always have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Last week I said whales are incapable of swallowing men. Remember I said that? Yeah. Only one whale can do that. All whales are incapable of swallowing men. From the blue uh, whale to the humpback whale to whatever whale. Except one called the sperm whale. The sperm whale. And the sperm whale has the capacity to swallow a man. However, the pathway to their stomach, they have teeth. Because they eat seals, they are carnivores. They eat seals and little prey in the, in the water. Now, because last week I made a general statement. Well, it's general, but I have to give a specific one. So it's likely that the miracle was not... I'll show you another side to how the miracle might have worked. Yeah. Is there a, a sperm whale that swallowed Jonah? Okay, what they draw is a sperm whale. They draw a whale, so we don't know if it's sperm or... But if anything at all, the sperm whale can do this. So let me use the sperm whale as my example. So last week I said, whales cannot swallow. Because their gut is too small for you, a man, to go through it. So that's a miracle for even the whale's stomach to open. But today I'm showing you the other miracle of a particular one too that cap is, has capability to swallow men. Now the sperm whale is such that when he's swallowing you, the pathway to his stomach will crush your bones. It's not straight. It, you have to go through junctions. So by the time you finally enter the stomach, you have been broken into pieces before you get there. Number three, when you also get there, it's a carnivore. So the digestive fluids can tame it. Hallelujah. That's it. Good. However, however, are you here? However, this sperm whale is a very interesting creature. However, in regards to the matter of Jonah, 
Jesus used Jonah as an example and said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights and came out, so shall the Son of Man also be there. The context of it is not necessarily in the matter of Jonah dying. On Everyone who came back to life was raised by another. Nobody came back by themselves. If you say Jonah came back to life, that means he raised himself back to life. And God never did it from heaven for anybody. He, if it was Elijah, Elijah has to touch a boy, comes back. But nobody touched Jonah, he came back. Number two, clearly from the things that were happening in the belly of the whale, there's no record he was asleep. He was writing what he was doing in the stomach of the whale. Jonah 2 says he was speaking, praying, and as he was praying, it means he was not yet dead. That means that the miracle is not in resurrection. The miracle is in God preserving him from the operation of corruption. That's why, so Jonah fulfills that David's prophecy of Psalm 16 and Acts 2. That thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to suffer corruption. So Jesus was in death, but death was not in him. That was the, that was the miracle of Jonah. So he and Jesus and Jonah's similitude of three days is not in the resurrection operation. It is much more in the protection that the digestive juice could not digest Jonah's body. Just as Daniel was in there. And it's, it's consistent with scripture in the way God operated in the old covenant. Daniel entered the lions there and the lions didn't eat him. So when God also put Jonah in the stomach of the whale, the digestive system was like a swimming pool. It was not corrosive. It was not acidic to Jonah. And he came out normal. The bones were not broken. Like Jesus. So you can see the similitudes in that regard. And it's very good that once we located the animal, it gives us perspective to understand how he was able to survive in light of Jesus' similitude. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Somebody says, so prophet, when will you start the seven spirits of God? You have talk, talk, talk. Uh. <laughs> I'm introducing it. Today I'm, I'm introducing it. I'm introducing it. I want to introduce the seven spirits of God to you. And I say to you that personally it's one of the most outstanding realities of the Holy Ghost that blows my mind. And if anybody understands this operation, it will change the texture of your Christian operation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God gave me a song. The title is Abba's Favorite Child. I got it this afternoon. I'll send it to you. You have to learn it so that I will sing it. The revelation of Abba cannot be emphasized. Hey, when you kneel down, pray it like tree. Major or what's wrong? It's a very nice way to say it. When you say our father, it sounds, it sounds like when you were in primary school. Our father, what in heaven? There's no revelation. When you say, Major, you say <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the seven spirits of God is a very remarkable reality of who the Holy Ghost is, what he does, most importantly. And if you ever find it, it will change the, like I always say, the trajectory of your life. It will change it forever. Listen, all the things I've said there, please, love the word of God, okay? Don't go a day without the word. Steady it. Memorize it. If you are looking for a, a, listen to me. Can I say this? Yes. My family and I, we use our daily bread for morning devotion. Who say you are proud? <laughs> Somebody say, ah, prophets, our ah, daily bread. That's for babies in the Lord. No, we use our daily bread. No. Can I tell you why? Human beings are creatures of habit. And habits are only operational by plans. The reason why a lot of you are inconsistent with your quiet time is because you don't have a guide that helps you to do it. The reason why some people want to gym but they never gym is because they don't have a gym instructor to help them to do it. So you don't have the catalyst that will force you even when you don't feel like. And I came to announce to you, the more... When you measure the feelings of doing the right thing versus the feelings of not doing the right thing, it's in the proportion of 70 to 30. That means the feelings not to do exercise is 70%. The 
than 30% of wanting to exercise. The feelings not to pray is 70%. So if you follow feelings to pray, you will never pray. Because by the time you have fulfilled 70% of that operation of, uh, I woke up, I didn't feel like really praying. I didn't feel like really fasting. I didn't feel like really reading the Bible. So because by the time you realize you have lost even the 30% of feeling like, now you don't have any feelings to pray. So you need to set alarms, schedule. Listen, I'm not even going to play with you. I'm going to be like the Lord. We are supposed to give all we have to him. But he says, I know you. Start with 10%. I am mean, say Holy Ghost will help you to plan. Because when you say Holy Ghost will help you plan, you plan your head in the spirit. And it's gone two weeks. You've forgotten the plan you and the Holy Ghost planned. I said to you two weeks ago that make sure your plans are documented. So by now, that's why I said, if you enter my office, I'll ask you, where's your plan? What's the plan for the year? Can I see the document? Can I see it written? In fact, please, don't put it on your phone. Print it. I told you it must be tangible. Don't let it be on your phone. Print it out. That this is my steady plan. This is my reading plan. And I have alarms for it. If you do that thing, something you initially is hard. But as soon as you catch up, you will know. Me, I'm a pastor. If I don't set, ask my, my, my peer. If I don't set my calendar for retreat, I want to retreat too. But programs will fit there. So now I can't retreat. So by the time I realize I'm more busy doing God's work than spending time with the God who sent me for his work. That's why if you don't take it, pastors are struggling to retreat, though they are pastors. Because the crowd can take your time more than your time with the Lord. And you are only effective with the people as you are with spending time with the Lord. So what did I do? They, they drew my calendar from January to December. All the weekends I must go on retreat. They've already clicked it down. It's written. So in my, my, all my programs is already write, written in the schedule. So then when you are planning it, oh, daddy, that's your weekend retreat. Too. Oh, yes. Then I move it. If you don't write it down, it will be in your head. 2022 hour exercise. Write it. Let your phone start beeping. Five o'clock after eating, we'll walk in the area. 30 minutes walking. Write it. If you don't write it, in your head, you have to walk home. That's how you'll be eating and become here for the tradition. Do you know the tradition? Your stomach will be there, zoom, yeah, there's the man of God. It's not easy. It's easy. Write it. You like that, write it. Why don't you write how much you will give God? Last day you were giving 50 Ghana every service. Why don't you write this year? I'm giving 70 CDs every service. So you write it down, print it, and be looking at it. Why don't you write at the end of the year by the power of the Holy Ghost? I have thousand pounds in my account, I have thousand dollars in my hand, and I have 200 euros. Write it and print it out. Put it in your locker. Every month, take it out and read it. Something is happening to your spirit. That's how, oh, that's how we change things. That's how we've all done. Because you see, how come the world stole it and told us it's called vision board? And you Christians, that thing they took from church, you are not using it. When they tell you vision board, every management course will show you a vision board. They will tell you, bring a book on vision. The team you want to play, the car you want to drive, and you put pictures from different places and put it inside. Because they quoted Habakkuk 2, verse 2. Write the vision, make it plain. And we, don't, we write it in our head. By marriage, I'm very nice. It won't be nice like that, though. There must be a plan. You know you have a very horrible attitude to work. You have many excuses to life. Excuse me to say, and town wash and town cook. It is the spirit of aquadro. Because to you, you feel there are no children, there's no guy, so why should I be bathing a lot? Why should I be washing a lot? Why should I be cleaning a lot? There's nobody here, I'm alone. No! It's first to, if you are not it, you cannot become it when you marry. Oh no, forget it. You don't become it because you are married. It, you do well for a year, but after a while to show. You, you betray yourself naturally, you'll be shocked. Because everybody is not comfortable, so your real nature will pop up. But there are some ladies I've met, they don't like bath, bath, that, that, um, um, what do you call it? dirty bathrooms. So you can see how they react. You can see they, even when you go for camp, you can catch them. Yeah. <laughs> because at camp meeting, 
when they enter, they don't say, here yeah, it's bad. But the time we realize it's, it's, not, it's not their place, but they have taken a scrubbing brush because they cannot, such a person, you can track her that mm, my bathroom will be fine. Oh, tell her, why are the ladies very serious like that? Tell her, ah, why? Relax, why are you serious like that? <laughs> Catch the fire. You go and inspect the ladies who, uh, who is scrubbing, who is not scrubbing. Catch them a lot. I told you when I was in university, I used to hang around when the ladies were cooking. Not hang around them, but like, you know, the way the hostels are, there's a place where it's like four kitchens. Then they, so I intentionally go and pass there. I see the way the girls are cooking. Somebody's cooking, but the whole place is scattered. I said, hmm. <laughs> Others, so when you enter the same kitchen, they've washed, they didn't, they cooked, they didn't wash their pants, they've gone to eat, and they are relaxing. And you even say, oh, excuse me, so oh, I'll come later. Uh -uh. This one, I've seen some before. Because even me as a man, because we're boys, three boys that my mom raised, we all learned how to cook. I don't know how to cook and finish before I wash. As I'm cooking, I'm washing. So if anybody will be close to it, it will help me. When we got married, my mama will tell you, I was organizing the kitchen. As soon as I entered the kitchen, I said, no, spoon should be here. This should be here. All spoons like this, from big to small. This to this. My wife said, it's my kitchen. I said, Holy Ghost, I, I surrender mine. <laughs> If I don't surrender my choice, we will fight over where spoons yeah. are. Thank God she's also neat, so it helps me. But I know she was not neat to eesh. No, I can't. It don't work. That's why you realize that it's not a dog a cry, a dog a cry, cleanliness a cry. <laughs> yeah. Is he a darling of something? Have a plan. You don't know how to cook. Don't say, listen, can I tell you something? I told you last time, Osafo, that in this our generation, women who know how to cook and do chores, they have rank. Yes, they have rank. Because, listen, listen, please, let's, ladies here, are you here? Do you believe I'm your pastor? Before you accept anything from the world, go and investigate a source. Investigate a source of feminism. And you realize that it is not an agenda from God. It is not from God. I beg you, it's not from God. It's not from God. There is no point increasing the right of one and oppressing the other. There is no point increasing the prominence of one and insulting the existence of another. I, talk, I preach a message to you, the father's heart. If anybody listens to what I said, you will change the way you raise your boy children. Yeah. Too many men are afraid to be men. That's why there's a problem in society. I'm telling you. Because I told you, if men are raised well, nobody will have the chance to succeed as a side chick. Because it's the men who are sponsoring the work. Am I preaching? <coughs> Are you nervous? Okay. It's a very chilled one. Eh? So have a plan that in this world of industrialization, the career woman, few women have domestic skills. It's not degradation of person. It's the same way as in this world of industrialization and effeminization of men. Few men who are masculine are rare. Men who know how to tell you that's wrong. And they don't care whether you scream, you shout, you slap them. Wrong is wrong. I can't agree. And after two days, they'll see you and say, hello, how are you doing? Is everything fine? And you are wondering why they are not emotional like you. They are not, they are not effeminate. They are men. They are masculine. They don't, men who do a kayo, you are, Jesus. <laughs> A man, you are doing silent treatment. There is a problem. There is a problem. problem. There is a problem. <laughs> you are having feelings like a woman. It's if, if, I'm serious. Men are becoming effeminate. <laughs> so men who are supposed to lead houses are throwing tantrums like children. So now, the children don't even have a proper measure of who a man is. 
Listen, when you get to America, somebody gave that statement, and I was watching the video of that. He said, you can see the difference between an African man and a black American man. Yeah. And the Lord even took me further and showed me. He says, most of the things you see about society, people trying to do a whole lot of things, earrings and tattoos, it is, it is emotions they don't know how to control. That's why. Yeah. And many of them, when you see them, you say, why do you have this tattoo? He says, it's, my, it's a suppression of a pain I was going through. Um, there's a signifier for this. You are dating a guy you are sleeping with, and you have written his name on your back. You've not married him. He has not paid your diary, but he deserves your name. And the, no the nonsense thing of our society is that we are saying that uh, 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 I can have sex with you, but I can't bring you to my apartment. That I'm not too close with you yet. So as for sex, we can have sex, but to know my house there, we are not there yet. Hey! You see that generation here? Because if you think about it, then to what end is a one night stand? Yeah. I don't know whether you are from hell. I don't know whether you're Juju Mansan. I don't know whether you are Mami Water or Papa Water in, his, in the in manifestation. I don't know whether you were a dwarf that has taken a human form. I slept with you. I've decided never to see you again. And to me, in my carnal mind, I think that it is, was one time something. I don't need to remember. Meanwhile, to spirits never forget. Yeah. Yeah. That means that if a dwarf sleeps with somebody, and the person feels that, oh, I slept with a lady, I don't know where she went. If she carried your sperm to the underworld, you see, you think you are suffering selective amnesia. There is, your, there is, <laughs> hey, behave. You are my council of elders today, don't misbehave. Sperm what? Sperm waves. Sperm wave. <laughs> it's a sperm wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no comeback to that one. There's no comeback. I'm stuck. <laughs> Anyways, listen to what I'm saying very well. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Don't, don't destroy your destiny like that. Don't destroy it. We are not of the world. We are better than this. You have a nice body. Listen. Hey, 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 listen. Your price is not in sex. If you are here and you are a lady, and the guy is there to say, if you don't have sex, I don't think you love me, he's a liar. Yeah. Because, also, for, I, was, I was doing another social, you see, because I like to study behavioral psychology in teaching these things, I studied and I realized that there is a lie in anything that is selfish. Number one, if a man tells you that, you have to test the engine before you buy it. How come you have been testing for three years? I thought when you go to Toyota, it's one test drive. Man of God, am I lying? We drive 100 kilos, some 100 kilos, some 100 meters. Doom, doom, pull, 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 we are back. You have been testing for three years. I came to another, that's ownership. <laughs> have you seen the lie behind it? You have to test before you drive. You have to test before you buy. Hey, hey, they've been testing you since. <laughs> Don't deceive yourself by listening to the Excuse me to say, non-faith, non-spiritual sense in the world. It's too, if you sit down and analyze it, there's a lot of, it's like your emotions make things that are silly look relevant. Think about it. What testing has taken one year? Rain, shine, night. <laughs> Oh, seven spirits of God. Seven spirits of God. I got to preach. <laughs> I'm concerned about our daughter. So. No, I'm concerned. Because the, the ladies, so, so there are problems that the world is, it's either sex or mental issues. Yes, because there's a lot of, and we don't want to take God's, listen, somebody told me, say, Prof, I get I was having mental crisis. When I started meditating on the world, word, my mindset changed. I became relaxed. I don't need psychedelic drugs. I don't need alcohol. I've told you many times, it's a disgrace that you need alcohol to have fun. If it is real fun, don't, don't have sus substance to help you. That if it's real fun, why do you need we or alcohol to have the fun? That means it's a, it's a hallucinative fun. It's not... Jesus. It's not real. It's a phantasmal fan. It's not real fun. 
And that type of fun, when you come out of it, you feel depressed. That type of fun, you don't really have friends. That's why some of the friends you used to have, they only have friends because of a bottle. They are only a friends because of marathon weed person. You know, some people you sit down, <laughs> rally. They are doing really. They pass the baton of the weed, Charlie. <laughs> so as soon as you stop smoking, you can't hang out with them. Because anytime you sit with them, they are high. And now you are thinking well. So when they are talking, you are talking rubbish. So what is the foolishness I was also saying? So sensitive. But when you are in the Holy Ghost. No alcohol, but you are drunk. <laughs> no we or cooking, but you are high. It's the Holy Ghost you'll be driving all of us. That's my son. Say, what's wrong? I, the Lord, the Lord just told me I love you. I just felt it. It's only the Holy Ghost that makes me see angels and I'm not hallucinating. Because the Holy Ghost will tell me I'm sending angels. And all of a sudden the, the traffic will clear. It's not hallucination. He said, Look at the angel. I'm coming to by the time you get there, you say the angel tap the traffic light. It becomes red for you. It becomes green for you. Everywhere you get green, 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 green. Like, hey, what's happening? Angels at work. It's not hallucination. It's the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. There's realness in God. But you know the problem? You that are here, you are not accepting to be a good advertisement of that realness. There's realness in God. Can't you go home and your husband and say, Sister, you have changed. He said, Why? He said, Who has been preaching to you? After sister, sister, I, I, man of God, some time ago, remember, I told the married couples that when, I, I learned it from my mentor, Prof. Nana, and I came to share it here that ladies, when you fight with your husbands, kneel down naked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, didn't I say it? Yeah. Didn't I say it? Yes. Hallelujah. And somebody who said that, ah, prophet, why is prophet saying these things? Listen, listen. If you will listen to the things we are teaching, your family will be fine. Yeah, family will be fine. <laughs> listen, if a man loves you, he's ready to go far for you. Far. But a woman can love you and sometimes make mistakes that can stress you. Yeah. Because she's in her own world. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that woman it, no when a woman adapts, it's serious. Oh. That woman says I'm adapting to this man. It's a serious thing. But men more, more men adapt to their wives than women adapt to their husbands. Yeah, it's the truth. Especially in that open, free, everybody's free. It's, it's, a, it's you, Charlie. Seven spirits of God. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in this realm, but let me just preach the message. Hallelujah. This type of things, it's, it's correcting things. Be nice to your parents. Bless them. Be polite. Stop fighting your parents. One of the testimonies that blessed my mother, prophet, I used to fight my parents. I used to create problems for my mother, but now we are okay. I'm so excited. That now at my mother's bed, I can give her a seed. And she said, who, who has been teaching you this? She said, my pastor. She said, you should bless them. I've told you me that if you bless me more than your parents, you, you're a suspect. What I mean by that is that my birthday day, you remember, but your birthday, you've pretended you don't know. And you just say, mommy, thank you for giving birth to me. The Lord bless you. That's all. That's all. There's no honor without cash. Let me advise you, there's no honor without cash. One of my daughters told me, so I said, Daddy, I, the thing you taught us, I practiced it. And I took my mom on dates, went to eat out. But unfortunately, she passed. But every time I remember her person, I thank God I was able to do that. They will not be here forever. You'll be misbehaved. And you know the painful part? You are sowing a seed. Your children will do you times 10. And you will not understand. No, no, there's a life to live in. When you live it and they are paying you back, you can tell God, this is not what I did. So, Stop it. And it will stop. But if it is what you did, no prayer will change it because the seed you sow, I told you I'll preach legalism at three. It is called the law of seed and harvest. Yes, consequence. There are some things you've prayed, you did, and it is growing now. There's a way to handle it. And as if you don't take care, you will confess, you pray, it's not changing. It is seeds you sow. That's why I told you that every detour, every backsliding, it is creating a certain bumpy Christianity. 
So you think that I went to the world. I went to chill. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Abba, I'm back. I'm back. Wonderful. <laughs> welcome. Abba said welcome. But you know something, sir? When I taught you about the realm of the spirit, if you sin, there's what you did. It was not a God, because of Jesus, does not have a problem. But the Satan who helped you to sin. <laughs> He's tracking you. All right, Revelation chapter 4. Let me start my message. So I don't know. Okay, yeah, say usually what I say before I start the message is helpful. I nearly said you should cut this part out, but it's necessary. Oh, yes. I should leave it there yes. to help you. Okay, so Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. I have a young sister, I have a young brother. Speak to them. Say, brah, stop misbehaving. One day you come back to God. Why don't you come early? Yes. We chin chin chin, sir. You say, oh, one, one day when you pay me, you say, Rade, my gym in this one. What? I fear what you in this one. So many damages. So why don't you start early? So if you are here, you have a young sister, young brother, and elder, tell them that, see, that thing, whatever will happen, you will come back to God. You better start now. Sometimes, press, just press that button. Just tell them that we are pressing this button and telling you that you have to come back. Play it. Yeah, you will come back to God, I'm telling you. There is no way you will go. You better start early. That's why it's a blessing you have started early. To affect the kind of person you choose to marry. The kind of marriage you have. Yeah. Live well, because the Lord is coming. Amen. 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 The world, they can play with divorce because they, their marriages, excuse me to say, many of them don't have a purpose. They don't have for this cause. We who are for this cause want to play like them unbelievers. Do you understand? We who are in Christ, there is a cause. And the cause requires submission and headship. Because our marriage has a purpose. That purpose requires leadership from the man, submission from the woman. But we are all assigned to the assignment of God. We didn't marry because of body. We didn't marry because you have a nice job. We didn't marry because your house is nice and be comfortable in life. No. There's a cause. And the cost can cause things to happen. That means in Christian marriages, I don't need to marry a billionaire. Because of the cost, we can cause billionaire cash. There's a cost that will generate things. Let's read together. One to go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord. So Roman Revelations to the 4 verse 5 says, Out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning with the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, someone will ask a question, what is the difference between the seven spirits of God, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit? All are different manifestations of the operation of the Spirit of God. Now, when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit of God, it's usually in, it's an internal work. I'm trying to find a very uh, comprehensive way of seeing it. The fruit of the Spirit is a, an internal work that is done within you. The gift of the Spirit is the power of God upon you to manifest an aspect of God. That's the gift of the Spirit. But oftentimes, that one is even in the, in the remit of the benefit of the person and the community they find themselves in. So he says in 1 Corinthians 12, the verse number 11, yeah. And go to verse 7. That's the point. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The word with us, with all, with all. So this prophet is for the body of Christ and for the person by which this manifestation is coming from also. So remember the fruit is for character, your own self, your internal, the internal work of God in you. So that's why we liken the fruit to Ephesians, sorry, John chapter 4, verse 14, the springing of eternal life within you. 
But we also liken John 7, 37 and 38, to the gift of the Spirit. The Spirit upon you. And the Spirit upon you is for the manifestation that profit with all around you. But when it comes to the seven spirits of God, that is a higher operation. That operation is not at the level of your prophet, your gift, your Allah. No, no, it's higher than this. It's, it's a little, it's beyond. It goes beyond. It goes beyond. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As we go into this service, you understand why certain things in your life will only answer to the operation of the seven spirits. That's why I say it's a very powerful message you have to hear. Let's go back to Revelation 4. Yeah. What does it say? Lightnings and thunderings and voices. And these are seven lamps. Okay. Now you ask yourself, why is it not 12 spirits of God? Or much more nine? Because nine is the number of the spirit, right? Why not nine spirits of God? God, nine fruits of the, the, the gifts of the spirit, nine fruits. Why not, you know, 12? Why? Why not 14? Why not? Because 14 is the number of testimony. 14 generation, 14 generation. Ah, why not? Why not 40? The number of preparation. Why not 100? Generation. Fullness of a generation. Why not? Why 12? Why, why not 12? Why not 9? Why seven spirits of God? Why seven? Now, the Hebrew word for seven, here in the Greek is the word hepta. Okay, hepta. But the Hebrew word for the word seven is actually the word sheba. 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 S-H-E-B-A. It's where, the word, where you get the word shabbat. Shabbat or sheba, shabbat. Okay, that's where the word is seven. Now, the word seven in the Hebrew etymology is for two things. It has two meanings. Number one, it means to make an oath or to swear. To make an oath or to swear, to enter covenant. That's the word for Sheba in the Hebrew. The root is Saba. Shaba, Sheba, Shaba. And so you find this first interpretation in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse number 2. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 2. Now, it's a very powerful scripture. I've said it. I said one day I'll teach on it. This year, probably I'll do it in School of Wealth. Give a portion to seven. So the Hebrew for swearing or covenant, they call it to make a seven. So give a portion to seven means that that giving is a product of a pledge, a covenant you have made with God. Anything I get from this program, I will give 50%. That is the giving of a seven. Do you know a shocking thing? But the giving of eight is called shimoni, where you get the word shaman. Overflow. Prosperity. That means that if you bring it in today's church setting, giving of seven is the giving of a pledge. Giving of eight is out of the abundance of what you have. So I don't have 1,000 CDs, and I pledge. That's giving a seven. But to give eight means I have 50,000 CDs, and I feel like giving God 5,000. That, that 5,000 I gave is called giving the eight. We'll get into it more. Not today. But I just wanted to show you one side of it. So that when you see this, give a portion to seven. It's not seven people. <laughs> it's the word seven means to, to make a covenant to swear. To make a covenant to swear. Number two, the word Shabbat or sevens, Sheba, is also the word to be complete, to count as a full one, or to satiate. Now, okay, this word seven is very powerful. I just want to show you another scripture in Genesis 24, verse 3. Just, just do a roundup quickly. 24, 3. See what it says. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven. The word swear. Is the word Sheba. So I will make thee seven by the Lord. That's what it means in the Hebrew. Okay. Are you here? Yeah. <laughs> the word of God, nice. 
Comes alive, huh? Yeah. Powerful. The Holy Ghost is our portion. Hallelujah. He said, I saw a young man, he said, man of God, how do you do it? I said, what do you mean? He said, how are you going to pray for three and a half hours? And you are not repeating yourself. We are not confused. We are engaged for three and a half hours. We don't usually even realize three and a half hours has passed. Yeah. I said, sir, it's anointing. It's God. Yeah, it's God. it's God. I don't plan to, if you notice, I don't plan. Sometimes I want to preach for one hour and then worship. If I had my way, I'll preach one hour. Because, no, literally, almost every Sunday, I preach without eating. So I'm not eating. I'm preaching to you. So when we close everything, you come and hand, ha, ha, hijack me. And I, sometimes, yes, I break. Some people go home with me. I break my fast at 12, sometimes 11. The whole day. So if I had my way, yeah. It's not like I like talking. Oh, do I like talking? Some people are hesitant. That's a joke. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, because if you know me, that's the only time I talk. It's like I see everything on mic when I'm done. Amazing. Bless you. I don't have anything to say again. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word I will make this swear is the same word Sheba or to seven. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to what I just quoted to you. The next one means, Sheba means to satiate or satiate or to make full one or to complete. To make a full one, to satiate or to complete. You will be surprised. There are some scriptures I want to just show you. Genesis chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 4. Are you there? Verse 14, in fact, 15, actually. He used a superlative of this word. So he says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. The word is Shabbathim. The root is the word Sheba. So the word sevenfold is the same word Shabba or Sheba. That's why if you check scripture very well, in fact, verse 24, go to 24 also. It's a superlative of it. Uh, Seventy and sevenfold. So it's a multiplication effect. He said, if Cain shall be avenged seventy sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy times sevenfold. So it's, it's a superlative of it, you know, like hundredth, but the root is hundred. So the word seven, sevenfold is a word Sheba theme, but the root is Sheba or Shaba, Sheba. Now, this word is the same word for to make full, to complete, to satiate. That is why Almost every time forgiveness is talked about, it's in a multiple of seven. Forgive 70 times seven. Seven times seven. Because seven means that by that number, any vengeance should be completed. Forgiveness should be a completed satisfaction. That's the basis of the word seven. Completed satisfaction. Are we here? Yeah. Okay. All right, don't worry. I know it's like you are like, oh, I do know, I do know, I do know. It's fine. It's necessary for you to enjoy the Bible the next time. Hallelujah. The All right. So the reason why it is seven means that he's saying that the seven spirits of God is an indication of the fullness, the completeness of the spirit of the Lord. The seven spirits of God is an emphasis to the fullness of, completeness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is the fullness and completeness of the manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord. Very, very important. That's why it's not 12, 
of course, I'll explain why it's even seven again later on. But it's not 12, it's not, but, but it speaks of that fullness, that completeness. That means it's the complete rendition, the complete manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. Now, the Bible says in Revelation 4 verse 5, Revelation 4 verse 5, we go. Revelation 4 verse 5. Out of the throne proceedeth lightning, thunderings, and voices, and there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, this description, let's go to Revelation chapter 1, the verse number 7. That's 7 and 8. Okay. Verse 8. All right. Find he that stand in the midst of the candlestick. In the midst of the candlestick. I wanted you to see this word. Verse what? It's chapter 2, verse 1, eh? No, it's, yes. Okay. So, he that standed in the midst of the seven golden candles. Do you have Passion Translation? Passion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you see something very interesting here. He says that, for these are the words of the one who holds the seven stars firmly in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden candlesticks. So you notice when you go to Revelation chapter 4, the verse number 5, he said there are the seven lamps burning with fire before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. But the Bible speaks about lampstands or candlesticks that represented the seven churches in Asia Minor in Revelation chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, in the book of Exodus, if you remember... I spoke to you about something very remarkable in regards to the seven lamps of the candlestick. All right, chapter 25, Exodus 25. I'll get more into this next week. Verse 32. Exodus 25, 32. All right. He says, now go to uh, 31. Let's start with the, the, the candlestick. Let's see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yep. So let's read together. I want to go. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work, be made, his shaft and his branches. Now, psh, hold it. Next week, I'm going to touch on something very important. Notice he didn't say its shaft. He uses a masculine pronoun for an inanimate object. Okay. His shaft, his branches, his bowls, his knobs, his flowers shall be of the same. Now, how can a candlestick? Did you ever have candlestick in your days? No, now things have changed. You know those days, those days, they, they don't have it. Eh? The docker people have it. But there was a time we buy candle, that white and red, this, uh, yellow and red box, eight in it. When they put off light, you, then you, you, some people still use it. Oh, nice. Okay. But, but we came to meet the candlestick because of the 80s and all that. So the, usually the candlestick was uh, some flowery thing. They had pin under it. You fix it on it so that... You carry it around the house, about four candles on it. Sometimes uh, in Africa, we didn't use it for dinner. We're using it to. <laughs> we use it to look for things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So, 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 uh, we'll get into that next week, actually. But go to verse 37. I want to show you something very interesting. So, he's saying the candlestick shall be made of his book. But he says that that candlestick, thou shalt make seven lamps thereof. They shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. So he's saying that this candlestick has seven lamps on it. Can you give me the picture now? Okay, it's supposed to be gold, but I don't know, CGI is playing games. I nearly even brought another creature, but CGI is wild. All right, so this is how it looks like. So next we get to it. This is more of, I don't know. It's not a biblical one. <laughs> It's fantasy was Gen Z. Yes, it's a Gen Z candlestick. 
<laughs> it's not the one in the temple. This is a very modernized something. So this, this is a candlestick. It's the shaft. You hold the shaft, but it has seven lamps. Next week, I'll show you how the lamps look like. So you know how, who has watched Aladdin before? You see the genie lamp. So typically, that lamp was a miniature version, such that you could take one lamp off it and move around. But it was on top of this thing. That's how it was. And when you fix it on top of it, it had a hole, I'll, I'll get into that, and had a network system where oil flows through and all that. Now, this thing is a candlestick, but each one is supposed to be a lamp. Are you, are you here? Because I just showed you. Exodus 25, verse 31, make a candlestick. Verse 37 says, the candlestick will have individual lamps, seven lamps. So the lamps are part of the candlestick. That means that Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, saying that the seven lamps is actually part of a candlestick. Why did I say what I said? We have one Holy Spirit, but we have seven spirits of God. One candlestick, but seven lamps. Are you here? It's quite technical. That's why perhaps I had to take you on a lot of detour. So one candlestick. Go back to the picture, please. So the candlestick is the Holy Ghost. That's him. That's why I said to you, verse 31, Exodus 25, his branches, his bowls, his flowers. The candlestick is given a masculine personality. He didn't say it. He said his that means the candlestick is a pressing. His shaft, his branches, his bows, his hop, knobs, his flowers. You know, so the candlestick is a pressing. But the candlestick, Bible says, has seven lamps. And according to Revelation chapter 4, the verse 5, these seven lamps are the seven spirits of God. Are we together thus far? Okay. So what this now means is that you are saying, you're going to ask me and say, Prophet, so where does the differentiation come in then? What, what are we talking about? You know, are you saying the, the Trinity is nine? No, that's what I'm saying. Trinity is not nine. <laughs> the Trinity is three. Yeah, three, three, three. Triune being. God is a triune being. And we are tripartite. Okay. Man is not triune. Man is tripartite. God is triune. That's the difference. So, now, God... Spirit or the Holy Spirit represents his essence, his person, his existence. The Holy Ghost exists as one. The essence of the Spirit is one. The person of the Spirit is one. Remember when I was teaching you on um, the realm of the Spirit, I touched on something a bit about Antanasius Creed. And I spoke about God. We worship God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. And I said, we don't confound their persons or confuse their attributes. So their essence. So in other words, their God is, is triune. The Holy Spirit is a person on his own. His essence is a person. He is God and very God. Remember I said that? So when I was speaking about the person, so I don't want to go into that because I've, I've thought on it, right? The Holy Spirit and me, right? So... His essence, his person, he's one. He's one and the same as God. According to, and, and you need to have that revelation held in your thought because that's, how, that's what's going to inform and help you to, you know, move through all the things we are going to teach. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, he said, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. So, and I said to you the word, the Lord is Yahweh. Our God is one, you know, one, one Yahweh. So, the Lord are Elohim. And Elohim here is plural. Yet he said, <laughs> our God, Elohim, because Eloha is singular. Yet our Elohim is one Yahweh. So the three of them is the same Lord. Come on, come on. I, I did this, right? Yeah, so first, Second Corinthians 3, verse 17. Remember what I said? So when I did this, I went there. What? Now the is that. So the Lord, the, the Lord our God is one Lord. That means the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, depending on what was being done, can reference the Holy Ghost, can reference the Father, can reference the Son. Right? 
We're together. Yeah. We're not lost. Okay. Now, when we, when we have time, we'll do Trinity properly. Now, the problem with Trinity is that there is something called um, universalism, modalism, in regards to the, tr the Trinity. So, the argument of Trinity today is on the basis of some of the theories that have trickled through preachings of old. One of it is God is one but chooses to function in different dispensations. And that's what we call modalism. God changes his mode. When you take that posture, it now brings the question, when Jesus was praying, who was he praying to? <laughs> you understand? But there's something called the orthodox Trinitarianism. That means that it is the, the doctrine that is explained from Scripture. When you use, in fact, someone said it. I forgot who said it. Robert Machin or someone. He said, to understand the Trinity is to be capable to advise God. There are some things when we get to heaven, that's when we get it. Your body and your vessel cannot catch it. Do you know even saying that Jesus is the offering, the offerer, the priest, the recipient? Oh, no, do you? Yeah. yeah. No, let me even give you another scripture that's very weird. Philippians 2 verse 9. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above a name. The word given is a verb, but it is in middle voice. It's not passive. Passive means Jesus received it. Active means Jesus gave it. Middle means Jesus was part of the giving and receiving. <laughs> that means Jesus had to enter the Godhead to confer the name and at the same time be human to collect the name. So it's only heaven that can explain that type of... That's why I said to you that when you see the CGI go like an angel with many eyes and you see, a, you get into the picture and you see a, an angel with wings and you even don't know where the eyes are and the wings are, you're like, ah, it's not like that in heaven, you know. As I said, like us unto. Like us unto. Beyond these things. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. You're not going home? Are you understanding the message? Yeah. It's blessing you? Yeah. All right. So, obviously, the Holy Spirit is the Lord. And I'm saying that this same Holy Spirit, he is the candlestick in his essence, his nature, his person. But when it comes to his work, that's where the Holy Ghost becomes the seventh spirit or functions as the seventh spirit. When it comes to the work of the Holy Spirit, it is where he becomes the seven spirits, the seven lamps. His function is at the place where he's explaining or he's expressed as the seven spirits of God. Remember, majesty co-eternal, glory co-equal. They coexist as one. Do you understand what coexist means? Do you understand coexist? Yes. yes. Coexist means that when the Father is here, and is talking to you. The Son and the Spirit are with the Father talking to you. Because this means when Jesus comes to us, he is the means by which the Father and the Spirit came to us. When the Holy Ghost comes to us, because this means that while the Holy Ghost is with us, the Father and Jesus Christ have also come to us. That's what it means to coexist. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you here? So I, I need you to understand this so that you understand their oneness and their uniqueness. But in that oneness and uniqueness, we can understand clearly that in his intrinsic personality, he is one, the Holy Ghost. In fact, there I say this. There I say this. It is at this stage, there's a differentiation. When the Holy Spirit comes into us, he comes with his essence. Bo, 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 bo. Are we here? Yeah. So I think two days ago, my wife was asking me about the song, Paul, Paul, your spirit, Paul, Paul, your spirit. He said, he said, my dear, the Holy Ghost poor again. I said, let me explain it. What came on the church was the Holy Ghost upon the believer. What is poor is not into you. It is unto you, upon you. So the song should actually, uh, I'm sure, of course, because I was singing a new song. They didn't capture all the words. But it's supposed to be, pour, pour your spirit more. 
more of your spirit. That's how it was supposed to flow. So it's more and more, more and more. It's interchangeable words. Don't worry, we'll, we'll do all of those things. But the point I'm trying to bring your mind to is that when the Holy Ghost enters a believer, he comes with his person. That is what is grieved. His essence, his nature is what is grieved. But we quench his power. That is manifestation. Gifts. All these two operations is at the level of his person and nature. But when it comes to the seven spirits of God, that is a different operation altogether. Oftentimes, the spirit of God is not what is happening inside you. It's beyond you. And we are getting there. So I need you to get it so you can, you can be able to put it to us. When you say, I release the senses of God, <laughs> you do explode. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you here? All right. So very importantly, you understand it. So everybody understands that the Holy Ghost is one. We understand the Holy Spirit is one. But when it comes to his function or his work or administration, he becomes what? Seven. Now, administration is a very interesting word. It's the word we call um, economy. And um, Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 2. Ephesians 3, verse 2. It says, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, what? Next verse. That how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote before in words. Now, do you have the Amplified Classic so we can understand the thing he's talking about in Ephesians 3 verse 2? Amplified Classic. Good. Wonderful. All right. He says, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace. So, he uses stewardship here. So, dispensation, stewardship. In fact, another translation uses administration. The Greek word here is the word oikonomia. So literally, it translates in Greek as, assuming that you have heard of the economy of God's grace. The economy of God's grace. But the economy of God's grace is connected to the work of God. I said that to bring this. When I go to NIV says administration, I said that to bring this to mind. When I teach on what I call the anointing, you understand this. There's something called the essential anointing and the economic anointing. It's also connected to the Trinity. Essential Trinity and the economic Trinity. Please listen to what I'm saying very well so it can help you to understand the seven spirits of God. Are we here together? Yeah. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. I don't want to get you lost at all. So to them, that's why I say I want to build it up today. Number one, when we say essential Trinity, John 10.30, who can read that scripture for me? Don't read it. Quote it for me. Okay. All right. Why did he say I am my father one? I told him many times. How, why did he say that? Yes, yes, yes. Somebody lift your hands and say, I bless you. I promise I'm going to bless you. Yeah. I know when I say bless, your brain starts working. <laughs> I'm going to bless you. So. Yeah. Why, 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 why? What led to John 10, 30, I am my father one? Okay. All right. I'm sure I see it in your life. Okay. I'm, I said I'll bless you. Okay. How does 500 Ghana sound? It's a powerful thing. Okay. I'll bless you with that one. I'll give it to you in church so that everybody sees that. I bless your life. Another question. Are you listening to the message or the elders are looking for a question? I've suspended my elders. This people will kill the empire. You see, the, the elders say they want a question. So yeah, he's right. 28 says what? John 10, 28 says what? John 10, 28. He says, I give, them unto, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This is Jesus talking. Verse 29, my father, which is, is greater than I, and he said, no one also can pluck their hand. So he's saying that he and the father are one in the matter of giving eternal life. So Jesus is the one saying, I give eternal life, because the father also gives eternal life, and no one can pluck you from his hand, Jesus' hand, and neither can anyone also pluck you from the father's hand. So I and my father are one. That's the basis of that statement. So this is where essential trinity comes in. But have you noticed what he said in John chapter 5, the verse number 19? John 5, 19. Very, very interesting statement. Let's read it together. Oh, please, together. One, two, go. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 
He says what? No, say it again. What did he say? Read it again. Mm -hmm. Do you go to John 14, verse 28 also. I want to show you something why he was saying what he said. John 14, 28. Let's read. Yeah, John 10, 30. I and my father are one. How can you be one with him and another time is greater than you? This is where the confusion comes in. That's what I'm saying. There's something called essential trinity and there's something called economic or ad I, I showed the word economic, administrative. Administrative trinity. There's a trinity according to administration and a trinity according to their essence. Trinity according to essence, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, they are majesty co-eternal and glory co-equal. They are the same. But when it comes to the administration of God, all of them can be the same. This is where Jesus said, in John 5, what I see my father do is what I also do. I can't even do anything by myself, even though I'm God. Because this is where administration comes in. And that's what I'm saying to you last time, that the blessing of unity should be studied from the Trinity. The Trinity, Father, Son, Spirit, they are the same. Yet, for the purpose of administration, they all can't be the God who is the Father. Because they, we have to take position so that the work we want to achieve in the earth can be achieved. So the father now becomes greater than the son. And the son is the one who sends the spirit. How can the Holy Ghost be sent by his own self? He and the son are the same. So how do you send the one you are equal with? For the purpose of the work. This is why I said to you, when you are in the world, you think you and your husband are the same. Because you don't know there's a work to be done. If you know there's a work to be done, you will not have a problem in submission. So all the Christian ladies ask, say, Prophet, should I submit? Ask yourself, what is the work? You understand why you must submit. Submission is not an issue of, should I submit? It's an issue of, do you understand that there is an administration? And the administration is why we are, even in the administration, do you know what he said in 1 Corinthians 11? He said, I tell you the truth. The man is the head of the woman, as Christ is the head of the man. And do you know what the Bible says? And God is the head of Christ. So there is rank. If you as a woman, you are struggling that the man is your head, then you've not studied Jesus and God. But we are the same. But I, No, he didn't say you were a slave. There is work to be done. There is something God... If I've, one of the things I learned in something to call um, uh, oh, occupational... There's a, there's a occupational something. I've forgotten the name. Occupational management. Is it management? Something. I've forgotten. Now, what, what that means is that when these people enter your company, they're able to understand your HR sequences and all those things. They, they, they have the ability to track your HR protocols, uh, organi organizational behavior. When you have that organizational behavior track, you're able to find in the organizational behavior whether the company has a good um, management structure. And one of the signs of a good management structure is what they call chain of command. Everybody cannot do everything. Somebody must give instruction. The next person takes. Listen, even cousins start a business. We don't have two CEOs. One will be CEO, one will be GM. Because there can't be all of us as CEO. It will not work. So somebody must take a subordinate role because of their work. So, when, ladies, let, let me repeat it. Ladies, the ability to submit to a man, if you are struggling, remember the work. <laughs> And when you remember the record, remember also that Jesus also, even though he and the Father are one, is still headed by God. Come on. Submission shouldn't be difficult. Can I even shock you again? Of all things the flesh hates, it hates to submit. The flesh. That's why I mean, one of the things I know is, if I find anybody I can trust, is somebody who is submitted to another person. Because the flesh, it reacts to submission. So if the flesh can behave under authority, I can trust you that you will not be sporadic. I can trust that. If you, if you, yeah. Recently I was dealing with one of my daughters. He said, um, somebody likes her and 
all of love that the person said, hey, Ephesus, when I marry you, I will have, I will share my story. And the reason why the person was saying was that it looks like the person, everything I teach, the person uses it as conversation. Yeah. I was so impressed. He said, do I write, that I write the things you taught. And sister, sister, I have wrote the point down. Yeah. So I, I throw it like a conversation. So he doesn't know where it's coming from. And sometimes the man will suggest something and he says, oh, I have to talk to my father about it first. And the man's like, hey, the day I marry you, I'll say something in the mic. Yeah. Yes. I was so impressed. Why? The man can trust that she'll be fine because she's under a pastor. What does that mean? The man can trace a trait that if you can submit to a man, then you can submit to me as your husband. But if you are having problems submitting to your pastor, the man will be afraid. Because even the man with anointing will say, take it, you fell down. You are struggling to submit. Is it the man who, who didn't brush his teeth and say, can I have tea? You will insult my friend, get out there. Yeah. It goes two ways. The man will say, Daddy, my wife is not acting right. Then I'll call and say, What am I hearing? The woman to the man too says, My wife too says, My husband is not acting right. It goes two ways. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord. Amen. Amen. So, I'm, you see what he said there? The head of Christ is God. Yet he said, I and my father are one. It's called administrative trinity. Or the, it's, it's, a, it's a trinity that's based on the work that has to be done. You can be cousins, so you can be brothers, so the two of us can be CEOs. Somebody has to be CEO, another MD, another general manager. Yet they are all brothers. And you'll be shocked. Sometimes all of them have the same share in the company. But because of the work, people have to take subordinate roles for the work to be done. That's how it works. Gentlemen, ladies, don't be unwise on letting the world teach you into his folly. There's a better life in Christ. Let all your methods, let all your thinking be that of Jesus Christ. You'll be shocked the kind of life you have. Peace forevermore. Yes, peace forevermore. Peace forevermore. Sex takes away from you. No matter how you are in the world, you might be enjoying it in the moment. When you are done, there is an, there's an oppression in the sky. It will make you feel something has left you. I'm telling you, it can be your boy of 10 years. You don't even know Jesus Christ. Every time you have sex, you feel something has left you further. Why? In the spirit, payment is being rendered. But you don't know where it's going. Who feel is a dance radia and a mumu. Brah. Separate it. Separate it before it takes you to something you don't want to see in life. Spam will. <laughs> Brothers, when you now see a sister who is not of the Holy Ghost around your brother, tell him that's a spam will. It's a spam wheel. It's under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you here with me? You know why sometimes I say the things I say? This generation, eh? Hey! I, I, know, I don't know how when we enter heaven to be. Oh. Paul is talking about how he abstained and he was resisting because he was a single man. Then we ask him, what did you resist, sir? Well, anyways, they also were in barbaric conditions. Yeah, because if Antipas was entering... Um, no, you'll be shocked. Even this was worse. The difference is that you have to go to the place it was being done. Ours, we don't go there, they bring it to us. <laughs> yeah, because in those days they had sexual orgies, they had drunken parties, amphitheater, you enter, we people are half naked, you enter public washroom, people are having sex there. You go and check Roman antiquities, very horrible stuff, crazy things. But they didn't capture this. <laughs> So if you come there, we see you. I understand it. I was, you are in your room. Nobody knows what you are doing. It's only you and Jesus. <laughs> are you understanding? It's only you and Jesus. So, so it's a very serious thing. I, I wonder how that conversation will go like. I, I know it will be very wild. When we tell us, I how far? Charlie, how Delilah said, hey, you don't know how Delilah seduced me, eh? Then you also see her say, hey! So in the days of Samson, seduction is very possible. Say yes. Well, seduce. 
May you not have conversations with generals about sedation. Can't I have you and now come to tell boy how you fall? <laughs> how you fall, say when you are lifted, you are asking how you fell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody entered heaven one day and said, Ah, he made it. I made it. All the angels were surprised. And even the family said, Ah, why you didn't think you make it? <laughs> I said, ah, you don't know how I was living. <laughs> That I open my eyes, I'm in heaven. I made it. It's not a good testimony at all. That means you didn't live correct to be when you were heavy. Hey! It's like luck. <laughs> Hallelujah. The head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God. So this, I, 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 I truly, sometimes we, we stay on some subjects because it's something that people are struggling with. Many people cannot, I was listening to one apostle, John Avanzini, and he says something. He says, and I think there's a powerful book he wrote, and he said, people go like they have given, they have fasted, their finances are not changing. And one of the things he wrote as a problem is wrong marital relationships. Mm. It can affect your finances. Yeah. You're not talking to your wife, you're abusing each other, it can destroy your wealth. It's a serious matter. Ah, I'm not the one saying the Bible said it. First Timothy, First Peter 3, 5, 7, right? Yeah. He said, Draw them. He said, Lest your prayers be hindered. That means your prayers can be hindered because of how you relate with your husband, how you relate with your wife. Can I tell you something? The day I learned that I don't treat my wife, my friend, my pastors because I fear them. I treat them well because how I treat them will determine how my life will be. I change the way I treat people. So I don't treat you because I want to be nice. So. So that my prayers, that my koya koya and my long fasting, because I fast a lot and pray a lot, I can't let trivial battles destroy my effort. No, I'll be too wise. I can't play that game. It's not because I love you like that, or perhaps I'm a peaceful person. I don't want my prayers, perhaps I'm even selfish. I don't want my prayers to be hindered. That's why I'm nice. <laughs> yeah. You'll be acting anyhow. Because like your prayers are being hindered. School of work, I'll show you. A lot of you are doing so many things that's causing you problems. Let me show you something. Don't be hanging around the sugar daddy and be praying for breakthrough. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, we'll be near him, we'll be near him. You know why I saw I said, somebody, God has warned them to let the guy go. But they are like, destiny help. Abba has sorted me out. <laughs> Yo, continue. No, it's sugar daddy that makes me understand that perhaps you can be sacrificing $30,000 for $1,000. Perhaps God wants you to trust him for $30,000, but somebody is using sex and certain conditions to bribe you with $1,000, $1,000, $1,000. I know the painful part about it. Uh, sugar daddy business is if you are not useful for the work, yeah. you have a spa. Yeah. Have a spa. Yeah. Can I announce to you something? I'm not speaking as an Africanist. Then am I speaking from whatever it is? God wants to bless you with a good marriage. Yeah. And can I even announce to you women? A good marriage is one of your safeties as a woman. Yes. I'm not saying that if you don't marry, you are failed in life. But I'm saying that some of the things that safeguards you as a woman is a good marriage. Because can I tell you another thing? When you grow as a woman, naturally you like to converse. You don't want to grow up alone. It's a wild something I've said. Let me just continue my message. Yeah. It's a wild something. Because there's a stage you get to in life, sir. The man doesn't want to have sex. The woman, they want companion. They just want to talk. Has your grandfather ever held you before? And you're well, like, yes, daddy, yes, daddy, yes, daddy, yes, daddy. Oh, huh, in 1958, I remember something. You're like, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you are laughing, forgetting that you too, one day, you will get to the age where you have many words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Are we together here? Yeah. So, the essential trinity, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, are one. Now, let me even show you. In Matthew 28, the verse 19, we see the operation of the eternal, essential trinity. It said, therefore, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Keep this scripture. Let's go now to Revelation chapter 1, the verse number 5. Revelation 1, 5. Let's read to go on to go. So let's go first, first four. Let's see. I want to see you see the list. Uh -huh. Let's read to go. I want to go. Mm -hmm. And from Next. Hold it. Have you noticed something that's going on here? He is talking of the Trinity. But he's using modifiers. Verse 4 says, And what? He that was. Revelation 1 4. He says, From him which is which was and which is to come, the Father. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne, that's the Holy Spirit. Next verse, five. And from Jesus Christ, not the Savior, but the faithful witness, and the first, so their modifiers are expressing the work they are doing. But in Matthew 28 verse 19, the same three are mentioned, but they don't add modifiers. He says, Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So oftentimes, when it comes to their work, even their names are who is first and who is second is intermingled. Praise the Lord. Fire. Fire. Oh, Apostle. Fire. <laughs> Apostle Mate is here. <laughs> Please let him come to the front. Osafu. Osafu. Fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, so, so you can see that in the operation of the essential trinity is the Father, Son, Spirit. But when it came to the administrative trinity, Revelations 1 4, he's giving modifiers. Who was, which was, which is, and which is to come? The Father. And the seven spirits of God. So, in the work, he's not called Holy Spirit, he's called seven spirits. In his work administration, he's called the seven spirits. And number two, he mentions the location of the seven spirits. The Holy Spirit, in his essence, is in the church. But when it comes to seven spirits, it's always connected to the throne. Are you here? Yeah. Revelations 4, 5. The throne is the location from which the seven spirits come from. But the Holy Spirit is in the church. Are you here? Are you sure? Yeah. So I want you to understand that essentially the Holy Spirit is one, his nature, his person. But administratively, his work, he's the seven spirits. He's the seven spirits. Because he's the seven lambs that have gone into the earth. Seven lambs that have gone into the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you getting it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Please, are you getting it now? Yeah. So in essence, Jesus said, I and my father are one. In their work, my father is greater than I. Do you get that? Yeah. Okay, so don't confuse it. And that's what I'm saying. The moment you understand this, then we can nullify that debate of modalism that said Jesus was praying to himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. No, he was praying to the Father. For the sake of the work, he became subject to the Father. That is why his will was not recognized. If he was essential with God, then the will of Jesus and the will of the Father should be the same. Yeah. But because he was working under God, even if his will is correct, the Father's one must override his own. That is administrative subjection. Are we here? Yeah. I hope the examples have helped you. Yeah. Good. All right. So having understood this, now let's now see why the seven spirits of God. Why was he given? What is he doing? What is he supposed to be doing for us? And this will blow your mind and take you to a place of true celebration. 
of what the Lord has done. Number one, it's not 12 like I said. Because when you read the scripture very well, um, from Revelation chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 16 thereabout, in fact, chapter 20, where the second death occurred, the lake of fire, the number 7 is predominant. Revelation 20 is the end of time. It's the end of time. That's the end of the battle of Amagidon, Hamagido. All right? In fact, no, the, the end of the battle of um, Gog and Magog, 1,000 years. So that is actually the end of time because that's the end of kingdom era, Revelation 20. So at Revelation 20, Satan is put into the lake of fire. Death and Hades join him. Then the Bible says, this is something that people have struggled with, but I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll, God told me I have to do a, a bonus prophetic teaching on the, the spirit realm in regards to the falling angels and some things. I'll, I'll touch on it. You will notice in Revelation 20, something very remarkable happens there. He says, the dead which were in the sea, the sea gave up the dead which was in them. It's a very confusing scripture in the Bible. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9, it's appointed unto man to die once and after death judgment. So which people are in the sea that have not undergone judgment? Yeah, that's what he said. Revelation 20. He said this. Eh? Is it? Yeah. So, no, find it for me, please. Put it there. So, so I'm look at verse what? Verse 12. Go to 12. Yes. So they don't say I'm prophets adding to the Bible. Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Books were open. Another book was open. And the book of life. The dead were judged out of the things were done. No, no, that's not it. The sea gave up the dead. The sea. Just find the word sea. It's there. So the sea brought forth its dead. Next verse. Is it next verse? 13. Next verse. Okay, go to next verse. Aha. Uh -huh. The sea gave up the dead. The shocking part, I, I say I'll get there. Because, <laughs> amen. amen. I told you this, I'll teach you on heaven and hell, right? Yeah. I'll teach you on this. When I explain this to you, I'll tell you that hell is a facility. <laughs> it's an individual. No, hell is a facility. I'm telling you. <laughs> At the same time, an individual. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. So when you enter hell, there's facility suffering and individual suffering. What that means is that the Muslim who was giving arms without Jesus Christ will not suffer like Hitler who killed people. There'll be two. Yes, it's like heaven. That is why, yeah, suffer there, you suffer, but it's in degrees. <laughs> no, listen to this. Oh. And they were judged, every man. So hell and death are not part of judgment. The books were not open for hell and death. When he sees every man, hell and death are not men, they are spirits. They're out of the matter. But every man according to your way. That means from Idi Amin to somebody who was living a good life but didn't believe in Jesus. Everybody's suffering is different. So hell is both subjective and objective. We'll get there. Wow. Yeah, because the Bible calls hell a female. Hell has open her stomach. Anytime you see hair for a, an entity, it is called subjective. It's, it's not... No, all of us don't suffer the same in hell. The same way all of us do not enjoy the same heaven. Ah, if Bob Marley accepted Jesus on his bed and Apostle Paul who labored all his life, every star differed from another star in glory. So is the resurrection of the dead. We shall be judged according to our works. So our works will give us rank. I told you, the blood of Jesus gives you scholarship. Your studying differentiates your class. If the blood of Jesus gave us all scholarship, we have gone to heaven. It is what you did with the scholarship that will make you first class or third class. Don't deceive yourself. We will all not be the same in heaven. Don't deceive yourself. Mm. Don't live in there and think that uh, heaven in here now. There will be ranks. There will be separation. And listen, if heaven tells you there will be separation, there will be a type of pain. Do you know um, there is crying in heaven? God has to come and stop it. He said he came and cleared the tears of the nations and there was no more weeping. So there will be a temporary weeping. It's called the death of the second death. Don't live in hell. Ah, if there will not be any cost to our class in heaven, why would God say there will be separation? If how you feel is how I feel. 
Do you know what he said? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy. Not every Christian will enter the joy of the Lord. It is the faithful ones who enter the joy of the Lord. Others will be there, but they are not joyful. Have you not heard books where people went to heaven and not everybody was laughing? Yeah. Some were in heaven crying. Why? Mm. You live anyhow. Think everything. It's not anyhow. It's not anyhow. It's not anyhow. <laughs> I think this will be the cure of the balance of works and grace. Yeah. When we teach it well, people understand that. Even though you are saying you're a grace creature, you fool, you will miss God. <laughs> That's why you realize that. Ha! Oh, the Lord, forgive me, forgive me. It cost you something. Oh, yes. What do you think? It cost you something. It's not because you said forgive me. Yes, you are forgiven, but it cost you a certain manifestation. Yes. Hallelujah. Are we on course? Are we understanding some things? So, when you check from Revelations 1 to Revelations 20, you see the number 7777777777. But as soon as you enter Revelation 21, another number shows up. 12. 12. 12 gates to the city of God. He had 12 stones and had 12 foundations and had 12 angels at the entrance of each gate. There were 12 books at each entrance. There were 12 tribes by which each gate was named after. And the city is 12,000 cubits by 12,000 cubits. 12, 12, 12, 12. But before Revelation 21, which is eternity, seven, seven vials, seven candlesticks, seven trumpets, seven seals, seven angels. It's the number of seven. Seven is fullness in time. 12 is fullness in eternity. That is why the first function of the seven spirits of God is for the administration of God in this time. The seven spirits are for the work of God to come to completion in time. God's work must be finished. And it is finished by the seven spirits of God. It's finished by the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why it's not 12, it's not 15. It's 7. Because it's, at, it's also connoting fullness in time. A fullness that must be completed in this dispensation, in this time. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You saw it, 12 pearls, 12 gates. 12, in fact, even when you get to chapter 30, it speaks about 12 manner of fruits from the tree of life. They're having 12 fruits from the tree of life. In Revelation 22. So you can talk, 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 but before the 12 is 7. 7 is perfection in time, completion in time, fullness in time. So the seven spirits of God are designed for the completion of work, God's work in this time, in this administration. It must be finished in this time. Number two, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. Let's go quickly. I want to read something quickly to you. Revelation 5 1. And I saw in the right hand of him, that sat on the throne, written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Next, verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? Verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereupon. There's a reason for this. I'll explain it. And I wept much. John was weeping because no one was found worthy to read the book, neither to look upon it. Can you imagine? He didn't say, the word book, do you have passion? Do you have passion or um, YLT or uh, go scroll? So it's actually a scroll. Now, who has a paper? No, don't 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 tell any shit. Give me the yeah, paper. Now this is John. He came and had a vision. And in the vision, he saw an angel. Go to verse one. And the angel had made a request in heaven. And when he saw in the right hand. Of him that took the, 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 the seven seals, he says, with, with the, written within and on the backside, sealed the seven seals. So the book actually is supposed to be a scroll. And there were seven seals on it, like hot wax on it, seven. But each seal had an inscription. That is why he says, the content of it must first be assessed by breaking the seal. But before you can break the seal, you must be even qualified to look at the seal. 
Ah, is it me who said it? <laughs> Are you not reading it? I'm just narrating what we just read. Oh, it's not what I'm adding to it. Yeah, so. But John saw that nobody was able to break the seal open, nor even read the contents thereof. So the seal had a qualification. So this was the seal that was there. When John saw that nobody was able, he wept. And the reason he wept was because, number one, the Bible said the seals that were on it had a requirement. And the requirement had to do with something called the kinsman redeemer. Number one, the kinsman redeemer is someone who can redeem us and is related to us. The story of the prodigal son means that God is the father, we are the prodigal children, and Jesus is the elder brother. Technically. Hey! I know you're thinking about the other brother's emotions and all that. No. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to explain. That's what I'm saying that I'm explaining to you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> of course, in context, the elder brother had to do the law and religion and Phariseeism and all that. But what he was trying to bring our mind to was this. The kinsman redeemer must be related to us. Otherwise, his blood is not qualified to redeem us. So the blood of bulls and goats, because we are not related to the animals, it was enough for a year. Our relative had to bleed for us. That's Jesus Christ. That's why he had to become, he said, for as much as the children partook of the flesh and blood, likewise he also partook of the same. Hebrews 2.14. So he also had to become flesh and blood and become like the seed of Adam, related to us, so that he can qualify to become a kinsman redeemer, like Boaz. Of course, Boaz is a type, remember? Because if you read the scripture very well, there were ten sandals. And the ten sandals speaks of the ten commandments. And the kinsman that had ten sandals speaks of the law that could not redeem us. The law could not redeem us. Hey. Let me preach. Hallelujah. So what is happening now is this, that when you read the scroll, there are two requirements on the seal. Seven of them. And the seal's requirement shows that God has two problems. If you can qualify to solve the problems, then you can break the seal. That is why the living creatures... Though they were willing, they were not able. So it's not just about willingness. Remember, Boaz said the same thing, Ruth chapter 3 and chapter 4. There were people who were able to redeem Ruth, but they were not willing. Because she was a 40-year-old widow. They were not interested. But Boaz was not just willing, he was also able. Are you here? So when they read it, they saw the two problems of God. Now the two problems of God... Let's, let's read on. Let's read on. Verse 5. Revelation 5. And then one of the others said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Next verse, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne was four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb. How come, and in fact, in fact, can I disturb you today? In fact, this is the only time that the lion of the tribe of Judah is used in the Bible. Wow. Mm. Have you seen it anywhere again? Yeah. This is the only time that's, that word is in one verse. <laughs> yeah, to the Mujatani at the Adeno. I'll show you something. There's a reason for it. So he said, Now, when I turned, the angel shouted, Behold! The Lord of has been prevailed. Then when he turned, he rather saw a lamb that had been freshly slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. That's why I told you that the fruit of the Spirit is inside you. The gifts of the Spirit is for the church and your community. But the seven spirits is for the world. It is what leads you to change the world. So when we talk about seven spirits, you're not talking of that your prayer for marriage. It's beyond that. But I'll also show you that some of you need the seven spirits of God to operate your marriage. Because your marriage is not for your enjoyment. It's for the world. I don't know if you get it. It's God is supposed to use your marriage to set a standard in the earth. That's where the seven spirits have to come in. And anyone who has a situation like that, your children, your marriage, your prosperity, there will be resistance. Because it's not about a local issue. The thing you are fighting, you are dealing with territorial powers. You need the enterprise of the seven spirit to usher that operation. Otherwise, you are stuck. 
So some people will marry, they will give birth early. Perhaps the assignment is not for the world. But some of you, what you carry, your mind will become a spectacle. Everybody will come and be inspecting it. Everybody will come and check you for patience. Go and check out the Bible. And you, next week we'll get there. You will understand why Samson, Elijah, Moses, Abraham, they had to pray to the seven spirits of God. Because what they did didn't affect their family. It was necessary for the pattern and the texture of our Christian life. So some of you, what you carry, you need the seven spirits of God to make it work. Because you are not just receiving a miracle for you. It will be a story that will be rehearsed in generations after you. So Satan knows if he doesn't stop you. Some people will believe this thing is easy. Mm. Some people will believe that you can give birth without X. So you will have to stop you. And some of us give up too quickly. Oh, they say, I don't have X. So I don't know. I think perhaps. Look, 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 at, look at what you're going to say. You didn't even hear it from God. Your feelings said, perhaps children are not my portion. Hey! No, yeah, you are saying, hey, you've, heard, you've not heard people say it. You've not heard it. Because Satan massaged your emotions, and I just told you today, in the law of the new covenant, your acting and your speaking is stronger than the season you are in. You can be in your season of marriage. If you like, don't ask for it. You will pass it. So some of you are like, Prophet, um, I've not really prayed about marriage. Sister, sister. You feel like don't pray marriage and think you might by mistake. Yeah. Chances are that the husband will be a mistake. Yeah. Ah, you are not praying about your marriage. In the season, God has activated that you should pray about marriage because you are not interested in it. And you think you will marry by mistake. Then your husband might be a mistake. Because yeah. it's in prayer you realize that this is false positive, this is true positive. This one looks like the prophecy. This one looks like the guy God told me. But when I do one, two, three, four checks... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fluke. It's not, it, it looks like the miracle, but a, a suspect miracle. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be trapped. So what happened? It showed the two problems of the law. I had to let you read it so you can understand. The two manifestations has to do with the two problems God had. At this time, God had a problem with sin and Satan. Satan has the keys to the earth. And man has been injected with the nature of sin. Whoever will take the scroll must be qualified from the requirements on the seal. If you see and you can qualify, then you are ready to break it. Then when you are ready to break it, you can read the contents of it. <laughs> because man, God had to make problems. And the one who will come. So the living creatures were willing, but they realize that they don't have the life that can make them handle the two. You see, the way the living creatures were, if they choose to help, they have to assume one posture. Because they are not the almighty. <laughs> so, they either will be the solution to the sin, or the solution to Satan. But, if they check the ranking, they perhaps can't outrank Satan. Because he's an anointed cherub in the class of an archangel. So if they are living creatures who are cherubs, and they are not in the rank of Lucifer, they will struggle. Number two, they are not God to be born. They are creations that were made. So they can't enter a womb. So it's possible the living creatures wanted to help, but they were not able I said this to say this. A lot of you are willing to have change in your life, but you don't have the ability to. You are willing to reverse this ancestral curse, but the ability to reverse it is not there. Don't get me wrong. When you are in Christ, he has made you an authority. But the fact that you are in Christ does not stop Satan from tracking you down. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah. And what tracks you down is not what tracks me down. The reason what chases you is not what chases you because of where we are all coming from. That means that what attacks you is connected to ancestry. What made your father fall knows what to do to make you fall. But perhaps what made your father fall will not make me fall. If your father fell because of fair women, my father's father might have fallen because of tall women and didn't care of color. So what made you fall might not make me fall. That's why the issue of ancestral cases must be properly diagnosed. 
So yes, in Christ we are above it. But it still gives them energy because they are blood. That's why anytime you enter the flesh, they can sniff you. I told you last time. <laughs> yes, I told you last time. They are lions. You are in the realm of God. You are like the deer that is panting after the water. You are in the water of God. So when the enemy comes, your life is hid with Christ in God. They can't strike you. But as soon as you enter the flesh, your scent comes alive. Oh yeah, that's why anybody here, if you're not spiritual, the thing that you think you can't do, you start doing it. Because you've entered the realm where what can make you fall has scented you. Hi! You will see right now you are looking for women. All of a sudden, when you see beer, your throat is bubbling. Go, 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 go. Mm. I did bear nice, so I bear nice. Because you have entered the realm where you can be scented. Hi! Are you understand the message? Yeah. Yeah. So when Jesus saw the scrolls, he saw the requirement. He said, I'm capable. And, the, and John was crying because you know why John cried? If John, if you read the scripture well, from Revelation 6 to Revelation 22 was after the seal was opened. That means if nobody opens the seal, the church will not be raptured. Satan will not be put into eternal darkness. The lake of fire cannot appear. The throne of God, eternity, suspended. Because nobody can. That's why John wept. Because what he saw that if this thing is not opened, the thing that the human, humanity will lose is serious. He wept. Sometimes when you see somebody praying and somebody handling some matters with desperation, you cannot see what they are losing. So sometimes it looks like, ah, it's a small thing you are praying about. Yeah, but you can do IVF. But you can do arrange marriage. You can go on Tinder or something and get a guy. But you see, we are not of the world. I cannot get a spouse on a mundane website that is manipulated by probably non-believers and certain uh, alphabet rainbow color people. You understand? So at the end of the day, if I'm entering a space to find a godly man, I have a limited spectrum compared to a girl in the world. Because I can't even make you leave your wife to marry me. It's not the way of God. But the one in the world, she has so many options with all kinds of men. She can do anything from Neymar to Zilla. Enchantment to makeup. She can use Botox and cosmetic surgery to enhance her age and reverse the years. But ladies and gentlemen, I need the anointing to look 20 years younger than I was before. God look at me in heaven and say, boy, can you not trust me with communion and you want to touch your waist? Can you not trust me with communion and you want to augment your breast? Can you not trust me with communion and some fasting to do some tummy tucking? Uh, am, I, am I preaching? So the girl in the world might have options because their king is the god of the world but my king and his kingdom has appeared and is being held by the church but there's a kingdom about to appear and in that day we will be in charge so my options are not like their options i need to ascend zion to activate my options so if you think you won't pray you won't fast and a guy will drop in your lap you're deceiving yourself you better fast you can get a guy, but he might not be a good guy. And you can get a good guy, but he might not be a God guy. <laughs> so John wept because he knew there was something behind the seal. And finally, when the Lord showed up as the qualifier, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, he was the one that was prophesied in Genesis 3.15. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and strip Satan of his power. Now I said the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. The king of kings from the lionic tribe of the, the originators of kingship in the nation of Israel has prevailed and stripped Satan of his kingship and lordship. But however, he also has to be a lamb to bleed for our sin. So when he bled for our sin, he gave us eternal redemption. According to Ephesians chapter 9, the verse number 12. He obtained for us eternal redemption. And ladies and gentlemen, when he obtained for us eternal redemption, he brought us into the blessing of this new salvation. But then, there is a problem. I taught you four words for redemption. Agorazo, 
ex agorazo, lutro and apo lutro. Now, lutro is the pain of ransom. Agorazo is going to the slave market. Ex agorazo is carrying what you purchased out of the slave market. But apo lutro is actually restoration of right and authority to original state. Because you can owe somebody, and when you pay, they can call you once a debtor. But when God died for us, he said, who can lay any charge? That means when you check our charge seat, it's not we were sinners and we are cleared. There is no record that we ever sinned. Because when you enter the justification record, there is no record. It's called a physis. The thing has been lifted and totally divorced from your life. That means there is no connection. Oh, I came to announce to somebody. The sin you are connecting to you today, according to the charge sheet of God, you have been absolutely divorced from it. So if you were once gay, you were once lesbian, and you are now in Christ, you are not a lesbian who now knows God. In the record of God, you have never been a lesbian. That is why Abraham had doubted God. Abraham had lied. Abraham had slept with Hagar. Yet the Bible said in Romans chapter 4, and Abraham staggered not. I thought God should have said he staggered once upon a time. But according to the records of God, his staggering was not recorded. Can I show you something? So when you are remembering your past, remember it for the purpose of salvation. That means if you need to tell somebody I used to be a lesbian, it's because you want to win somebody. Don't be walking and say, mm, <laughs> I used to have feelings for girls. So that operation, it will make you go back. Because you are reminding your flesh the feelings of your yesterday. You should so forget it. You are like Peter. As of Peter denied Jesus. When the Holy Ghost came on him, he stood up and said, Men and brethren, this same Jesus you denied and you betrayed. He has forgotten he was the chief. <laughs> That's, God should give you that grace. Because if God has put your sins in the sea of forgetfulness, what are you doing remembering it every morning? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. If you keep reciting it, you'll go back. Stop it. Because the Bible says, if they were mindful, remember I taught you, mind control. If you are mindful of yesterday, you'll go back. Everyone who goes to tomorrow has forgotten yesterday. God will give you a husband. And by the time he gives you the husband, you will forget even to share the testimony that, hey, you also waited five years. Or you waited seven years. And someone will say, did, oh, yeah, yeah, I did wait. And the person will be surprised because it's never been a description of you. Because you are not mindful of it. When you are mindful of it, it's, it's all over you. It draws. <laughs> hey, are you here? Yeah. Why did I say what I just said? Go back to Revelation 6, verse nine, verse, uh, 5, verse 6. Revelation 5, 6. I want to end with this. Try. Now, he said, Lo, in the midst of the throne, four beasts, and there stood the lamb that had been slain. Look how he says, Having seven horns and seven eyes, ke le andoros, which are the seven spirits of God. God. Look, when he said this, I was scared. This is the one I wanted to bring to you, but I knew that CGI would make it complex. The picture of the lamb with seven eyes is not a nice picture at all. So I didn't want to bring it up. Now, there's, the lamb has seven horns and has seven eyes. And the Bible says, the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God, which has gone throughout the earth. Now, number one, they've opened the seal. And because of that, all the contents of the future has been accessed. So can I tell you something? Redemption has opened the future for you. You have to know this. You have not, you don't have a problem of an uncertain future. Something has been done for the future to be open for you. Something has been done. Now, this is the part I want you to see. He said he saw a lamb that was slain. And this speaks of the resurrection, uh, the redemption work of Jesus Christ. But redemption is not enough in the sense of just dying for our sins. Redemption is not just lutro. That's why there are four words in the Greek for redemption. Paying the ransom is not enough. Why am I saying what I'm saying? If I pay for your ransom, I have to have the power to carry you from your prison to your next location. When I carry you from prison to your next location, if your property was stolen, I should have power to restore you to what you lost. So paying for the ransom is not enough. So the blood of Jesus paying for our sins was not the end of redemption. 
It was a part of it. The remainder of it was that we were once debtors to God. The debt has been paid. You know you can pay your debt and lose friendship. Yeah. But when he paid the debt, Bible says, therefore being reconciled. By, he said, Romans 5, you know, Romans 5 verse 1. He said, therefore being justified by faith, we are what? At peace with God. And he said, he has given us that reconciliation ministry. Because we were not just brought back. We have peace. We and God have no issue again. In fact, when God sees us, doesn't see us as debtors anymore. Because of the power of the apple utero. Now, this is it. Are you here? Yeah. If they buy you a land, and when you get there, there are land guards or squatters. You own the land. In the court, is yours. But there are people that are there. You need to scatter them. The Bible said, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Hear me well. I'm going to say something very powerful in regards to the seven spirits and the. Oh, my God. Are you here? Yeah. He said these seven spirits, the, the lamb that was slain, has seven horns. Remember what Habakkuk 3, 4 said. He said, which was the hiding place. Out of his hand came horns, yeah. which was the hiding place of his power. So horn speaks of power. What he's trying to tell you is this, that the lamb has been slain, yet the lamb has power to ensure what he has died for is properly delivered without any shortage. So if they have bought the land, the redemptive power of the finished work of Christ has the capacity to suck any squatter. To displace anything that is there. This is what the seven spirits does. So when you got born again, the ancestral spirits in your life, the ancestral spirits in your family, the ancestral spirits that fight marriage, the seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God, has scattered anything inhibiting your life. So you are not redeemed to suffer like you are not born again. The seven spirits of God is scattering any inhabitant. That is not consistent with God's authority. So that's what I'm saying to you today. I'm going to say something to you. Listen to me. The seven spirits is the method by which you sail through life like hot knife through butter. And people will ask you, so what fights us in this family? It doesn't fight you. Because the seven spirits has gone to, he, said, he didn't say into your, into your bedroom. It's not on your head. It's in the earth. That means that anything on earth that will limit your expression of destiny, the seven spirits of God has gone ahead so that though you are redeemed, nothing on earth can reduce you to, 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 a, suffer, to a slave. You know some people are redeemed, but they are still living like they are slaves. So stop living like a poor person. My father owns the heavens. He owns the earth. What? What? Listen. Hey, listen. Hey, are you here? Let's not get to school of faith. If you are traveling to Kumasi next time, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, may your faith be stretched to buy a plane ticket. Sometimes you have to just exercise yourself in Ghana. Yeah. But if you do that mistake, you might never travel. Yeah. If you do the mass, you will not travel. But when you start with Ghana, 2,000 Ghana, yeah, because the, it's not you can't afford it. Your mind is like 2,000 is half of my rent. <laughs> Why should I burn it in 45 minutes? <laughs> That's how some of us are thinking. And it's a poverty mind. So sometimes you have to disabuse your poverty mind. Your phone is 3,500. Your phone is 4,000 cities. But your phone has nothing to do with... Have you noticed that because you have a certain type of phone, when you are buying any phone, you don't go below it? Yeah. That means even the way you... Ex you that, let an uncle give you iPhone 15. You will struggle to buy 13. And you will think you are proud. No. Something has happened to your taste. Are you listening? Yeah. That means that <laughs> I'm, I'm saying this to tell you something. Nobody in your father's house, nobody in your mother's house can stop you from shining. Because the seven spirits of God has the seven horns and has gone into the earth and has destroyed any limitation. You can do well in Ghana. Your business will become an international company. Your business can become a Fortune 500 company. Because the seven spirits of God have gone ahead of you. Yeah. Nobody in your house has ever seen one million before. You will see it. Yeah. Ah. Everybody who travels has to lie and they are married to someone. You, you will go by the grace of God. Yeah. God will carry you there. And when you share it, we will all be shocked. How you got your citizenship. That's, that's how God does it. And I'm trying to tell you that. So God didn't just bleed for our, our salvation. He made sure his seven spirits 
which is the seven horns, had the power to ensure that everything in our redemption is delivered to us. So today, when you are praying, lift your voice and send the seven spirits of God. And say, I send the seven spirits of God into my family. I send them into my business. I send them into my bloodline. Anything in my family that is rising against my health, rising against my children, rising against my marriage, by the seven spirits of God, we displace every foul spirit. We displace any occupying entity in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the seven spirits, you do that. So that's why I told somebody that you can be anointed, you can have the Holy Ghost, you can have the fruit of the Spirit. But without the operation of the seven spirits of God, you will still be under the influence. Not, I want to say it well. You see, in the new covenant, what you know is stronger than what you don't know. Let me repeat what I said. In the new covenant, what you know is stronger than what you don't know. I'm telling you. One day, I was flying business class for the first time. So when I entered the business class, the lady took my passport and I went to sit down. And when I went, the person saw I was not eating. So the lady came to me and said, excuse me, sir, buffet is available. I said, oh, I don't feel like eating. Then the person said, I didn't show that I thought I have to pay. Because when I saw the food and the drinks, I was wondering, Charlie, <laughs> you know, are you understanding? We've all been delivered from the spirit of poverty before. <laughs> Don't deceive yourself. <laughs> I know there's another spirit I have to delete in my spirit. Some, some, because if you don't delete it, if you don't delete it, yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. You know, there's, a, there's an amount you fly first class versus business class. If you don't delete it, you might never fly first class in your life. And some of the first class, God won't give it to us a miracle. Because the miracle might not come if you are still thinking like a poor man. So sometimes you have to be the first to buy that ticket and say, it's 120, it's 200,000 Ghana for, hey! Hey, hmm. hmm. You know, that's the, anytime you travel with a poor man's mentality, you have a special calculator in your system. This shoe is 25,000 Naira, 25,000 Naira times 0 0.001 Ghana City. Mm, that's like 200 Ghana. Oh, it's too expensive. Please, another time. No. If you ever go to America, that's how you shop. They are saying sales, 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 sales. Fifty dollars per shoe. You are like, mm, fifty dollars times thirteen cities. Hey, six fifty. Are they? No, no, I can't buy this. Six fifty for what? Shoe way. I'm at the sukra here. That's all. Also... <laughs> when we were in Nigeria, I told Papa a story. <laughs> I told Papa a story. I said, Papa, I and someone traveled to. A certain country, and the country was doing sales. And we enter one of your shop, that head shop, you know, I started B. I said, Papa, you do or no? I'm sorry, you sell 70%. And the price was 7,000, 8,000. Yes. <laughs> it was 7,000, 8,000 dirhams, and it is 70% off. So I was with the person, I said, Man of God, the jacket is 7,000 dirhams off. Hey, 70% 70, 70 off. He said, man of God, then let's enter and see. So this is where Prof, Prof Nana has been shopping. So then let's enter, let's enter. So we entered and they were selling these slides. And the slides were 70% off, but it was around 1,500 dirhams. And if you do the math in Dubai, in dollars, it's around $500. That's 70% off. I said, these slippers... So I had a shoe. I said, okay, okay. So we saw a very nice leather jacket because it was cold. wanted to buy a jacket. How much was it? 70% off. And the jacket was around 8,000 to 9,000 dirhams. When you convert it, then we did the mass back to Ghana City. <laughs> That's Ghana number 20,000. So we just look at the people and say, so I look at the man. I say, so he said, man of God asked me, say, man of God, so how much do you live in cities? I said, oh, man of God, it's around 20. I said, 20 what? I said, 20K. He said, hey. I said, yes, sir. Then we just left. When I told Prof, Prof laughed. I said, sir, they said 70 pesos, so I'm going to try. <laughs> That's why I realized that there is more poverty mindset I have to break. The seven spirits of God. Today, may you despise the seven spirits of God. You too, you deserve to stay at this Lego. 
but you see if you don't send the spirit there's a spirit fighting you that says that you don't buy a house in a foreign land you need the spirit to break it to break it what, what, what destroys what spoils it that you have hundred thousand dollars somebody just say I want to give you a hundred thousand dollar check what spoils it then when you get hundred like ah, if I can get hundred I can get one million what spoils it you two can't you get one million dollars Today, if you do the math, one million dollars is 13 million Ghana. 13 million Ghana. You deserve it all, child of God. What are you thinking? But today, when you go, we will pray before, but you have to release the seven spirit. Anything your ancestry that has drawn the line, that this one, they don't do it in our house. You must be the first to do it. Remember what I taught you, the law of the firstborn. Now, in the old covenant, also, I discovered that nobody in the old covenant was firstborn by birth. God always chose the firstborn. Always. Ishmael was born. God gave it to Isaac. What even made me realize God is very deliberate about this matter? Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother Abel. Firstborn came to Seth. If you look at it, what made me realize God is very smart about this matter was when Manasseh and Ephraim came. They have not seen though. Nobody has fought though. But Jacob swapped it. He said the younger will be the head. So God chooses the firstborn. And I announce to you that in Christ, because we are written in the book of the children of the firstborns, may you be the first to do what has not been done in your house. May you be the first. You must have the best marriage. You must have the twins. I know you say there are no twins in my house. May God cause you to set a record. Oh. Triplets, all kinds of things. Break the record. You too, you can be the first. Can I ask you a question? Yes. I'm a geneticist by training from school. We did a lot of genetic biology. I came to understand, sir, when we were born from Adam, we have been transferring genes. But do you know that the fact that you say your family, they are twins there, have you ever asked yourself, who was the first one to bring the twins? <laughs> who was the first to bring the first set of twins? If you understand what I'm talking about, in genetic, bi genetic biology, or uh, uh, what do you call population genetics, there's something called mutation. That means there's somebody in your family that something happened to their XY alleles. And when it happened, it began to allow twins to enter your family life. I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus that may the Holy Ghost cause you to be the first. Whatever is not convenient with your bloodline, I pray that let the blessing of God bring you the blessing of the firstborn. May the seven spirits of God go ahead of you. May the seven spirits of God scatter every impediment. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Lift it and begin to pray. The seven spirits sent to out the earth. The Holy Ghost is in the earth today. He is supervising the battles on the earth. The Bible said the king's heart is like water in the hand of the Lord. He turned it wherever he pleased. God ruled in the affairs of men. Lift your voice and pray. I see the seven spirits of God in town. I see the seven spirits of God in your family. I see the seven spirits of God in your business. I see the seven spirits of God in your education. What Whatever has not happened before, we declare the Spirit of God is going to and fro, to and fro. He is ensuring there are no squatters. He is ensuring there are no squatters.
to bring, to manifest the blessings of redemption. Lift your voice and pray. You are not designated to poverty. You are not designated to barrenness. That is not your portion. Lady, you cannot inherit disease. Send the seven spirits of God. Lift your voice. By the seven spirits of God. We scatter. We break every hold of the enemy. Somebody lift your voice. Anything you are dealing with, whether it is character, whether it is issues in your family, by the seven spirits of God, we break through. We break through. We break through. We break through. In all the earth. as kings and priests in the earth he has made us as kings and priests in the earth he has made us as kings and priests in the earth as revelations once he has made us as kings and priests in the earth we are declaring the name of Jesus do you notice this go to verse 4 verse 5 he says verse 4 he says, and the seven spirits before the throne. Then verse 6 says what? He has made us as kings and priests in the earth. Do you know that chapter 5 also, when we spoke about the seven spirits of God in verse 6, he also says he has made us as kings and priests. And every time the seven spirits are mentioned, that is the strength of our kingship and our priesthood. So the reason why you are dressed like a king today as a queen today, the seven spirits has gone throughout the earth. Look what it says. 
and shall reign on the earth. That means that the scope by which the Holy Ghost, the seven spirits can go, is the extent to which your reign, yeah. your words yeah. will reach. You want to lift your voice. You don't care who buried your destiny. You don't care who arrested the family's development, whether 300 years ago, 500 years ago. By the seven spirits of God, he has been made unto us by God kings and priests. And we shall reign in on the earth. We are lifting up a voice right now. That wherever on the earth, wherever in the sea, wherever in the sky, a destiny, a blessing, a miracle, a family heritage has been buried, has been hidden, has been manipulated. Lift your voice and begin to pray that by the seven spirits of God, we dispatch the word of the Lord. We dispatch the voice of the Lord. The Bible said, and the spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters. And God said, the seven spirits is on the earth. So wherever you declare your word to go, the word of the Lord will come to pass. And it will bring you a testimony. And you will see what you have said. And you will call it as good. Lift your voice and pray. Whether it is from Cape Coast, whether it is from Adar, whether it is from a Volta region, whether it is from Akim down wherever it is from you are lifting up your voice in the name of the lord jesus somebody be serious about this be serious about this every squatter every spirit that is inhabiting the lives of people on the earth lift your voice and pray Make decrees as a king. 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 Release a law in your family. None shall cast their young. Nobody would die prematurely. We arrest the spirit of death. We destroy the oppression of disease. The king and the priest, they are packing up the seven spirits. They are packing up the seven spirits. Europe must yield to you. America must open for you. South Africa, Africa must respond to you. Let your voice, let your voice. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Want to lift up one last prayer. As kings and priests, that means that we have backing of the seven spirits. That means that the problem is, Jesus said it, that until now you have not received because you have not asked. The problem is that the devil deceives us to feel like this one they don't ask. Because he says, as long as you ask, ask that you may receive, that your joy might be full. I told you last time, anytime you have a joy issue, it is a problem from asking. You have not asked. When you ask, joy comes. So your, your, your lack of joy is a product of no asking. If you ask, your joy will be full. So we are lifting up our voice again. You see this thing that's happening in Israel. Iran is bombing. Everything seems as if Satan is trying to activate the manifestation of the Antichrist. We are lifting up our voice. That the seven spirits of God is not just for the church. That is what makes, next week I'll get into it. I didn't get into it. There's another one in Zechariah chapter 3. He says there is a stone. And on the stone is seven eyes. And the seven eyes is the seven spirits of God. I, I, time will fail me to get there. But that's another dimension. But today, we are lifting up our voice. Some of you, America must open to you. If you don't release it, eh, you will go to visa to bounce you. Some of you, London must open their Europe must welcome you. 
Anytime you show up and your documents show up, they are accepting you. Some of you, Africa must open to you. Any country you enter in Africa, you will not need a Ghanaian to receive you there. The strangers will come. Bible said, the forces of the Gentiles shall come to thee. Even their army shall come to thee. And your enemy shall lick the dust off your feet. We are lifting up a voice in the name of Jesus. That Jesus' kingdom shall stretch from shore to shore. That anything that is not consistent with the pattern of God in this season, concerning wars and rumors of wars, May the seven spirits of God be dispatched even throughout the earth. Lift your voice. Lepers, oh God, lepers, oh God, lepers, oh God, may no man die without hearing the gospel. May no man die without hearing the gospel. Lord, passion for your son, Lift your voice, lift your voice. In the name of Jesus. Listen. The time is nearer than we first believed. I believe that this generation might not pass before the Lord shows up. When I was coming, the Lord spoke to me about something. He said, I need to do an altar call. I'm going to do an altar call for people, firstly, who have never publicly given their life to Christ. I'm saying publicly because you see that secret service Christianity is the same reason why you keep falling. Because nobody even knows you are born again. You are not accountable to anybody. So it's easy to slip back to the world. But there's a way you do it in front of everybody. Everybody starts saying, I thought you were born again now. It might not be for everybody here, but somebody, at least somebody online, who just chanced on. You've never accepted Jesus as a Lord and personal sin. If you are like that, just slip up your right hand to heaven. Just slip it up. If you are like that. If you are like that. If you are like that. Just don't be shy, please. You've never publicly done it. Slip it up. I can see somebody's hand up. Please stand to your feet. I beg you. Okay, don't be shy. Stand to your feet. The Lord spoke to me about you, so I know what I'm saying. I'm a prophet, so if I do an altar call, the Lord had, must have spoken. Please come to me. Gentlemen, come to me. It has to be public. Don't worry. Jesus said, if you accept me openly and deny me openly, I also deny it before everybody. Who invited you to come? You say? You've been coming for a while, but you've never accepted Jesus. What's your name, sir? Bernard. Lift your hands. Give him a microphone. Come and hold a mic to his mouth. Okay. Is he the only one? Okay, perhaps someone is online also. If somebody is online like that, give us, give us a thumbs up so we can see. I want to follow up with you. Bernard, look at me. 27 years ago, I accepted Jesus Christ. 27. 11th January 1997. 
I want you to record this date. It means much to change a lot of things in your life. See, the Christian work is a spirit life. So you need the Holy Ghost. And it says, because it's a spirit life, you need guardians. You see, even on earth, this physical life, we still need physical guardians, parents, to help us navigate. Then the spiritual life is most important that you need guardians because that realm, you can easily get lost. You need guardians in the spirit to help you. So as we pray for you today, something's going to change in your life. That I can guarantee. You will lose interest in a lot of things to just drop like that. Some of the things you will lose interest, but they'll be looking for you. However, are you joining him, my dear? Come, please. All right. Some of the things, however, will be tracking you. But nevertheless, because you've done this, we also have a program where we'll be doing baptism for you. So that Egypt that is chasing you by baptism, God will drown them and there'll be no more. So I want you to slip your two hands up. My dear, lift your hands too. All right. You've never done this openly before. Wow. No, no, you've never done it openly before. Lift your hands then. Say it after me. Father, I decree and I declare that indeed I'm a sinner. I went my own way all these years. But today, I come to you and I accept all my wrong because I believe your blood is able to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Wash me, cleanse me, mold me, and use me for your kingdom. From today, I will follow you wherever you go with my life with my time with my energy till the end of my days in jesus name amen father i bless them and i release your strength and grace over their lives i release the presence of the holy ghost over you yes help him the presence of the holy ghost is a new day for you you newness you have never experienced before Newness you have never experienced before. Newness, my dear, that you have never experienced before. I release the Spirit, as Jesus did with the disciples. <sighs> Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you did that also online with the prayer, please send us your name to admin. Somebody should text admin right now. Let the person send their name phone number everything we have something to send to you um yes please follow the gentleman behind you kindly bernard am i there kindly follow him Nana, follow him you take your details and the last thing this is the major one i had to do this because of the major one and the lord said to me he says that many people are being influenced by the spirit of apostasy and i had god tell me he says that in the last days many's love shall wax, wax cold and many shall fall away from the faith so the Lord told me, he says, do a rededication. If you are here, and I want you to, listen, be led, but don't come and do any emotional thing. This is a serious business. That you know where you've gone to, you need to surrender again. This is not salvation. This is rededication. You have allowed him to be savior. But he's not been a lot over your life. You have your own time. You do your own things. You know, you will just accept it by doing your own thing. If you are like that, come to me quickly. Please, time is gone. If you are like that, come to me. Just worship quickly. Run. It doesn't matter what you are, what you do. Just come. Run quickly. It doesn't matter. It's rededication. It doesn't matter. Come. You know that you, are, you have not allowed him to be Lord. He's not in control of your life. You are doing what you want. Just come. Come. So these people are not accepting Christ, but they are rededicating their body and their members to the Lord. That God will be comfortable by the Spirit in their heart. Can you all lift your hands to the Lord and speak up to me? 
say, Dear Lord Jesus, I have accepted you as my Lord and Savior. But I accepted the Savior part of my salvation. But I have not allowed you to be Lord over my life. Today, I surrender my body. I surrender my soul. I surrender my spirit to serve you, your interest, your desire, and your house. As I rededicate my body, use me again. Be comfortable in me. Help me to live like you want me to live. Father, I pray for them that by your power, by your strength, no man can prevail. Let your Holy Spirit, oh yes, I reintroduce you to the Holy Ghost. I reintroduce you, Justice. I reintroduce you. Precious Jesus. <laughs> Precious Jesus. Glory of God, so boy. <laughs> he will use you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid. I reintroduce the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. No more struggle. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Yield to the Holy Ghost. He will use you. Yield to Him. It's not difficult. Yield to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fresh anointing. To be easier. Yes, 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 yes. Easier. Glory. 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 Easier from today. Easier. Fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. His Lordship will be clear. Even in your life. Yes. Go mark this day. Go mark this day as a new beginning. Where you decided to recalibrate your spiritual life. Fresh anointing. Help him. God is using it. Help him. Help him. Yes, yes, yes. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. Oh, my dear. On this day which is even your birthday, God, you say, you will not forget today in a hurry. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The anointing of God rests upon you. We pray for everybody online also that in this rededication, let God use you supernaturally. Let it be easier than ever before. You, therefore, your members as instruments of righteousness. Your members are in everything that chased you once upon a time ends today. Father, I thank you. Your name is exalted, even now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we call it done. Please uh, get their names, just follow the team. Amen. Lift your hands to him. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Lift up your voice and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. For me. Death could not hold you down. Yeah, yeah. You are the reason. Seated in majesty, you are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. You have won it all.
have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. See that in majesty. Listen, your life has changed. Today is the 14th day of Abib. And by 17th day of Abib, according to the Jewish calendar, the Ark of the Covenant rested on Ararat. And it says, the curse has been reversed. You were asked to dress as kings and queens because that's who God has made you. And I know you didn't know that your kinship and your rulership was connected to the seven spirits of God. Because the seven spirits of God are in the earth. You will reign. I said you will rule. You are no more a victim. You are a victor. Even in Jesus' mighty name. Are you excited? All right. So I told you already, September is going to be fireworks. <laughs> This time we are there from Wednesday to Sunday. And don't miss the Friday 12 hour marathon. Oh, prayer. Hallelujah. Before the prophet comes, uh, the atmosphere must be charged. What do you think? Amen. God willing, from 24th also to the 3rd of May, we have our glory fast. Hallelujah. And we are crowning it on the 3rd of May with a super all night. Don't miss it for anything. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But today, one powerful man of God is in our midst. <laughs> Amen. And um, uh, it was supposed to pass when we were closing, but I didn't finish what I wanted to say. And there's another aspect to it before I start the seven. So it's a long journey. Yeah, it's a long, but it's necessary. What do you think? Has it helped you to realize that some of the family issues, you need seven spirits to handle it. It's, it's not meekness and joy. <laughs> you need seven spirits. The government of the Holy Ghost to handle the matter. Hallelujah. So can we receive greeting and he will pray for us and close us. Hallelujah. Let the, let the apostle. Amen. I like your dress. Oh, chaya Hallelujah. I mean, um, um, I, I just came through to pass through and then um, look at how handsome my brother is. <laughs> when I entered, I was wondering whether it's him or not. Because, I mean, I am learning things that I, I don't know. I'm telling you. I was sitting when I came in the first five minutes, I was lost. <laughs> but I could see that you're enjoying it. I mean, it's good um, that we support what he is doing. He's fulfilling his ministry. And we all have ministries that we also need to fulfill. In his ministry, we find our ministry. So whatever we are doing here, we need to do the work of an evangelist by sending it out that is my main purpose i was just sitting i'm like wow the world must hear this i mean a lot of people don't know seven spirit they say, what we know about seven spirit is different no? <laughs> but my eyes are open to something else tonight i'm going to war with it yeah. yes i'm telling you if we knew some things like this the seven spirit it can maybe in delay it would have but i mean it's an eye opener which i believe that the world must hear these messages i mean we can't just take it but be selfish with the message we need to send it out you know when we say we have to go for evangelism we don't go why we don't go for it's your system so, so so use your social media platform to send the message out it won't cost you anything that's why we're all here I mean, we, we are all on platforms. It's a Mungkuan platforms. Yeah, yeah. 
dangerous platforms. I remember a school, an old school WhatsApp group. It's a mukwan omu digu. Omu omu digu so 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 for it's not for you. So let's also penetrate through that with the gospel. I mean the things you are sharing here. Send it out there. How many have a Facebook account? No, no. We won't change Jay Z for the do so yeah. <laughs> you do. How many have Instagram account? Gen Z for no. <laughs> we are dangerous. <laughs> TikTok. Okay. So I let's propagate whatever we are doing. Here. That's my mean now that I am a preacher of this thing. I believe that the world must hear, especially with this ministry. I believe that God is sending us somewhere. And when I entered, I saw that the limit over the ministry is broken. Amen. Yes, when I, I saw the, the, the limit, bro- I saw that there are no walls. Amen. I saw that uh, the, the roof is not there. And, I, I, and the Holy Spirit ministered to me that the limit over this ministry is broken. Amen. Watch it. You are going to see overflows. Watch it. It's going to happen. But we also need to do our part by doing the work of an evangelist. Whether you believe it or not, this ministry is a prophetic ministry, but it has an apostolic mandate. Yeah. It has an apostolic mandate. That's why you see your pastor always roaming around. There's apostolic mandate on him. You've not seen anything yet from now to the next five years. It is going to be so much that you'll be looking for him, you can't find him. Because he has to fulfill that apostolic mandate that is on his life. And you can also do that by, by making him stay here. But the word will enter into the nations. You can stay at one place, but the word is entering into everywhere. By you doing your work as an evangelist. Yeah. So don't use your Facebook, uh, 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 your friend is saying, Instagram account for Insemhu. Go to uh, 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 official prophet Adam. Yeah, go there. Yeah, go there to feed on the word. I go there. Last time, another one, one message blessed me. Witness. Bibi, bibi, witness. Red light, new green light. <laughs> Velvet green. Uh, very, power, very powerful. It blessed me so much. So go there. I go there to feed. It's my junior brother, but I receive inspiration from him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice, my junior. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I mean. But I mean, he's blessed when it comes to the word. I, when I tell him, he doesn't believe me. I said, in Ghana here. No, I'm telling you, in Ghana here, apart from my father. <laughs> when it comes to revelation of the word, dissecting the word making you understand i mean it's one of the best yeah if i am if i'm studying the bible and i don't understand something i will call him as often is judas in heaven or hell <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then he will, he will quote some scripture go and do this this i mean i'm blessed and I, 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 learned, I told him how do you people do that everybody is reading the bible and uh, finish from genesis to revelation it's a grace and it's a spirit that he carries that we all have to learn this is my greeting you don't tempt a man of god with a microphone <laughs> but i'm blessed you know i'm blessed to be here somebody shout fire Hallelujah. You know, this year is going to be awesome because my, my there's a surprise. <laughs> there's a surprise, so don't worry. This this time is, this year is going to be awesome. We are working on a surprise, don't worry. <laughs> and it's going to happen, it's going to happen live. So don't worry, you see a face that you collapse. <laughs> So we are working on something. So make sure you are part of it. You know my favorite place they can meet, you know. That one we don't dress like this. I mean we feel free. And we'll be jumping around. 
The way I see a mom pie and a bin in a more gentle. I know. And they come, no, we scatter the place. All the God bless us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand. May the Lord favor you this week. May Abba show you all his goodness. Let his grace speak where you fail. Let his mercy correct every error. I bless you with the strength of God. I bless you with the ability of God. And let this week be your best week ever. As we have aligned to the season of Passover, let every limit pass over you. Let every limitation be passed over. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go conquering and to conquer. Now I pray for anyone that is sick in any part of your body. I take authority over wombs. I take authority over heads. I take authority over spine. I take authority over stomach. I take authority over legs. I take authority over internal organs. I take authority over blood. And I declare whatever is an error, I correct it in the name of Jesus. I send the life of God through your body. Whatever it is, I declare right this moment. Receive your testimony. Receive your relief. Receive your deliverance. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Greet somebody and share the love of God with the person. Amen. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I've realized the mystery of iniquity.